this semifinal game between McNeese State and Villanova. It's College Hoots. Missouri at Memphis. Lee Prince, the uh, conference player of the year. In and congratulations to McNeese. Rob Franklin along with Josh Sungold. Jam-packed Hearns Field House here in Columbia, Missouri. And I'll tell you, this Missouri Tiger team has been on ball club as you look at the game tracks here. Field goals, 3 of 13 Memphis, 10 of 21 for Missouri. And look at the turnovers, 7, 8. He's the point man. Well, you think of uh, Missouri a year ago and the point production. Now trying to chisel their way back in. They have stayed man to man defensively the whole time. Marker Johnson, his first power move of the afternoon at 6 9. McKinney. Jimmy McKinney, a freshman out of St. Louis. Coaches really, really like him. Drives it to the hook, and you see why. You see why? Oh, what a strong move. His high top. Well, we can't wait for his senior season. Big Arthur Johnson pulls up at the free throw line. Shoulder soul of his six points. It is Missouri by 14. Very third season at Memphis. Missouri, 18 points of their 30 in the paint. Four for Memphis. 8, 94, 95. And final four in 95, 96. So he understands what it's about. And since he's been in Memphis, has not gotten to the NCAA tournament yet. Left that basketball. And, and if Paulding gets it in the open court, it's pretty much a showtime here in the Hearn Center. It has been twice already this afternoon. You know, Paulding a high flyer on for the Missouri Tiger team. And Carney the... Cronky into Arthur Johnson. Nice quick turn. That first step was like lightning, and he already had... Shot clock is at two. Johnson falling away, and that's the way it's been for Missouri in the first half. Everything they have... Look for Rice on the baseline to see if they can get him open. And that ball is knocked away. Arthur Johnson... Chiero is about to check back into the lineup, but... Uh, coach wants to talk to him and now last year when the NCAA bids went out uh, Memphis didn't get in Missouri did and he said that the Missouri Tigers took their bid well, well just a moment ago this was a really exciting moment this is Brad Smith the young freshman quarterback here at Missouri newcomer of the year in the Big 12 conference only the second youngster in NCAA history to pass for 2,000 and rush for a thousand in one season in the foul line Take a look at some of the highlights. He has gone outside with a soft touch. He has uh, the, the fadeaway, which, again, if a big guy can do this, well, how difficult is it for uh, someone to stop him? A little in motion. Uh, last year was Clarence Gilbert, Kareem Rush. It was their team. And then Arthur said, you know what? That was then. This is now. This is really the first recruit. That continued this week in Memphis. And uh, Coach says, Quinn Snyder said, we're not going in that direction. That's not going to be our battle thing. Go on and win the NIT. Good job nice by McKinney. Scored the hoop, but now I'm on the free throw line. That, that almost looked like a continuation after a whistle, but they're going to count it. They're too far underneath. No blockouts. And look at all the white jerseys around the offensive glass for Missouri. McKinney kept falling back. Uh, got McKinney for Missouri. Just looks like he is going to the, the star. Get it. They've got five seconds. You're right, John. And Rice passes it off. Three-pointer on the way. No good. Well, momentum in Memphis's favor, Ron. They have made a good run at the end of the half. And John Calipari high-fiving and, and a smile on his face. When you're down 15-0 and you get a... Here's where Memphis has turned up the pressure. They're yeah, doing they really a much have. better job. They've done more trapping on the basketball. They've just gotten after this Missouri team and forced them to make shots over the top. Ferguson, Missouri, will tell you about Arthur Johnson. He has quick hands, and he will make some steals. It will be big. Trayvon Bryant with the tray. Holding for three. First basket since the 16. Holding for three. Wow. Little shootout now, partner. Both as though he may not wanted to use it. As Quinn Snyder might have warned him, hey, we don't have that many to use. And holding the quick catch and shoot. At the end of last season, Maryland, Texas. Maryland, Texas. You know, you've got a, when you have a point guard like Chris Thomas and shooters, Matt Carroll, Ben Moore, I mean, they can really get it going. Clemens for three, got a call that one. <laughs> Missouri for three, that one uh, short, left alone again, but he also sees Bryant alone with a higher percentage shot. 
Really nice pass from Clemens. Young man has range. Into Big 12 in the coming years. Understands the game, understands how to play. Terrific shooter, good passer, good size. Coach, you say, you know, the bottom line is Missouri's been patient on the offensive end this second half, looking for good looks. McKinney driving and scoring. Well, the wreck can come right back. You look at Big Arthur there, and only his junior season. Doug Smith was a first round. Uh, this is uh, upgraded. So it's you, Dave Leto at DePaul, Soderbergh, Brad over there at St. Louis U, and Mike Anderson, assistant for Nolan Richardson for a number of years. Oh, that between the two players, and now here comes Clemens after the turnover, and the little guy will jam at home. I say the little, he's only 5'11, certainly the smallest man on the floor. Back of the lineup. And he rattles it home. This is the biggest lead of the ball game. Shot. Bryant. Nice rebound. And scores on the follow. Gives an open avenue for Bryant with a the rebound. There's the reach by Grice. He's on a four. He thought Trayvon Bryant might have been the reason and the difference uh, that, that when the Tigers got to the NCAA tournament, uh, Trayvon was tougher, which made... 54. Coach Bryant took 115 of them for junction teams. That team was the worst. They finished one and nine. And when he passed away, he was wearing two rings. One was his wedding ring, and the other was a 20. Clement says, give me that thing. I'm going to bounce it into Big Arthur and see if we can score any down. Good hustle by this move by the Missouri Tigers is. They've got a better situation as far as five people to work against, I think, that they've had in a while. Yeah, I think so. And the guys that come in, we mentioned. Kevin Young, the freshman. And you're playing the 10th ranked team in the country. We don't, no matter where you're going, guys. Johnson getting back defensively. He thought he had a good block. Pretty clean. But and off in the corner to Crockett. And he bounces it to Johnson. Air ball and holding right there just like a pass. Well, you how good your team's going to be going into conference play. And both of these teams have tough conference battles coming up. Balding. I don't know how, but he got it to go. And when he explodes, his ability to move his body and adjust in midair. I'll do a little uh, coaching with him over on the sideline. Youngster only has one point. This is by far his worst outing. But uh, like your teammates say he is really very, very good. Very talented young fella. How about that? Yeah, well, they, they're going to have a tough year. Uh, depleted. Some guys left. Some guys have been suspended. So it's break time. 2.48 left in our ball game. That's something to cheer about. McKinney. Lobber to Frank. Just kind of players. They're right back there. And, and we've already found out that might not be the case. Kansas, you take away Drew Gooden, who is terrible. I'm sure Aaron McGee's gone, but so is Darian Selby. Remember Selby, Selby come in and do so many <laughs> things for the ball club. So you've right. got to off and win games. How big is that game coming up? But McKinney, just out of high school, goes back to uh, to St. Louis. It's over the holiday season. It's a festive atmosphere. Half of the Keel Center will be in orange. Hardy can't get that one to go. One of those afternoons. Yep. Sometimes it happens. It works, and sometimes it doesn't. Final score, Memphis 78, Missouri 93. The early burst is what did it for the Missouri Tigers, and they come up with the big win. Coming up next, national finals. Ron Franklin singing so long from Columbia, Missouri. Tigers fans are here in full force. So, too, for the fans of the Fighting Illini. It is hard to imagine a better atmosphere this early in the season than the one we have today inside the Savage Center in St. Louis, the 22nd annual Bush Dragon Rides game, the border war between two teams that come in undefeated on a roll, two teams ranked in the top 12. Number 10, Missouri, taking on number 12 in Missouri history, coming off a double-double against Memphis, and Brian Cook leading the way, 25 points, 11 rebounds in their win over Temple. Hard to find a more consistent player than Brian Cook. Arthur Johnson going to be very important for Missouri. A lot of offense flows through him. He has to handle the double teams that come his way.
Big Ten officiating crew, Steve Wilmer tosses it up. He works the game along with Tom O'Neill and Danny Gray, and it's Missouri who controls it was tipped. Quinn Snyder, of course, in his fourth year at the helm and was just offered a contract. Straight to Johnson, the double team. And the double team's coming post to post. That means Johnson's going to have to make a quick move or fire it out of there to an open player. Ricky Clemens, 4-3. The youngster in his first year of the track this year. Roger Powell off the dish from the round. So, Williams with his first. You look at the series history, the 22nd annual game here in St. Louis. Last one from Missouri. Clemens from just behind the line. Johnson with the putback. Arthur Johnson very quick from the catch to the release. Ball reversal. That's where you can attack off the dribble when the ball is being reversed. And Cook can shoot the three. Gets it back. Not sure you want to be shooting off the first pass. Not a bad shot, but could have been better. Ricky Clemens high off the glass and over Brian Cook. Clemens a scoring the defense oftentimes. Excellent move here by Clemens. He's able to put the ball on the floor so effectively, and what makes him effective off the dribble is he sets it up and go by it. Ricky Clemens and Dee Brown, maybe two of the quicker point guards in control underneath. Augustine to Powell, he doesn't buy it. And the Tigers clear. Clemens looking to shoot again. Aha, uh -huh. 4-3. Great is that when you're coming down in transition and you've got Welcome to Iowa City, number 16, Missouri, leading Iowa 35-30, make it 36-30 now. We have 7.03 to play in the first half. Dave Barnett and Tim McCormick, it's been a close game until the last couple of minutes, a rather quiet game, but Steve Alford got a technical a moment ago. And a, a deeper, more athletic Missouri team right now Starting to assert it. Reiner, the Hawkeye big man, has three fouls, and he's the foundation of their interior defense. Ricky Paulding quiets the crowds, hitting only 24%. He's hit three, and right back to answer is Paulding. <laughs> Some of the things you've missed, an early three-pointer by prize freshman Jimmy McKinney. And then this terrific backhand crossover maneuver by Ricky Clemens. That led to a three-point play. A couple of breakaways. Six-foot Chauncey Leslie showing his athleticism. And then you've seen this already. Brody Boyd averages 7.8 per game. He already has nine. And, and Ricky Paulding blazing hot right now, Tim. You know, that, that was ready to pull away. Brody Boyd's three three-pointers, the biggest reason they had it. Reversing, Kevin Young, 6-9, 2. Iowa sticking to a lot of zone here in the first half. Driving runner and Ricky. You have to believe that with Michigan State and Oklahoma, it's got to be like looking in the mirror. Plagues. This is the first meeting. Iowa up six as Kareem Rush hits a pair of three-pointers to tie the game in Kansas City. With eight tenths of a second, Clarence Gilbert fouled and hits the second of his two free throws to cap his 27-point night. And Quinn Snyder breathed a huge sigh of relief on a 1.78-77 win. Game has come so far. No comparison. Ball away, go! And after trailing almost the entire first half, Iowa to the locker room with their first lead since 12 to 11. 49-48, Iowa, terrific game. Scored 20 on five different occasions, half of their first 10 games. Good cut, good looking. Early moments of the second half. Johnson coaxes in the hook and the foul very soft touch he's carved about 60 70 pounds off that frame yeah his scouting report involves the left box he loves it down there his goats picking up number four and replaced by sean sondelider a three-pointer way out in the corner against iowa ricky clemens junior college college of southern idaho Two years ago, led the nation as a high school senior, 35 points per game. That's the Ricky Clemens we've seen here this afternoon. He's a blur off the dribble, makes the threes, and, and he told me that he, he goes to school to a lot of Clarence Gilbert, except that he's so much better off the dribble. Trayvon Bryant. Oh! 
You were wondering why Missouri wasn't going more to Arthur Johnson. Well, now they are. And they get McKinney all of 6-3. Clemens a little stop and start. Out for a three-pointer. McKinney, obviously the mask does not bother him in the least. Where Iowa was with all the suspensions, they've had a great start to this year. Arthur Johnson shows a nice soft touch. Says we stat toughness, meaning they keep track of things like charges, loose balls, three-pointer. Ricky Clemens has four. At number 20, Tulsa, a win a week ago. Definitely upset that there was contact on the three-point shot by Clemens. Currently, currently one of the best athletes in the NBA with the Golden State Warriors. He's always a pretty good they the all-West regional team last year. Hagen Wright's matchup. Clemens tries for another three-pointer, cooling off for the moment. Point blank, it took Bryant two follows to hit one. For 11, Oklahoma. First game for Miami in their brand-new $48 million arena, the Convocation Center. Clemens already a career-high four threes, now make it five. Afternoon between Ricky Clemens. Who has five threes, 23 points, and Brody Boyd all of his points on road game of the year. They just can't shake the Hawkeyes. 75-71 their lead right now. They played twice last year. Missouri winning in Kansas City by one, but it was a different story in Columbia. At the time, Missouri 9-0, ranked second in the country. Iowa would win going away, 83-65. And Reggie Evans let him hear about it as he left the floor. Don't ever go against who you are and what you believe about your system. And he admits he did that last year, bending a little too far toward the individual right, right. for Luke Ray. A man-to-man -man motion guy, and that's what they're back to. Sonderleiter, terrific reverse. Clemens and back for McKinney's three-pointer. Way long. Roy Sonderleiter lucky they didn't foul him out right there. He's had night 9.30 Eastern ESPN2. LeBron James returns to a national television audience as St. Vincent St. Mary of Akron, Ohio. Meets a modern-day high school team led by DJ Strawberry, the son of Daryl Strawberry. It was 49-48 Iowa at the half. Two tries in deep before Johnson finally drops in his 16th. He is carried out. Clemens a pick high from Bryant. Down to five to shoot. His three-pointer banks in. No way. <laughs> no way that was supposed to go. Sometimes it's, it's more than anything else. Just luck. Great defense. Not a great shot. Falling away. Dave, tell me that wasn't supposed to bank. It was definitely not supposed to bank. <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely the same three points. Eighty-four, seventy-eight. Golfer, the scratch free throw shooter in December was Ricky Paulden. First make, he was exactly eighty percent coming in. He's no sandbagger. Knocks both of those down. Bucky, the only Tiger who's played on all four of Quinn Snyder's teams, including the had a series of concussions in the early season, and they decided to let him sit out the entire year. 88-80, 23. Missouri's going to win it. They don't even call the obvious foul on Leslie, and it's all over, and Missouri takes an 88-82 victory. Their first in Iowa City in 71 years. Quinn Snyder's team improves to eight and one. Steve Alford's falls to eight and three. Again, Missouri 88, Iowa 82. Our final coming up next, Women's Pro Billiards, the 2002 WPBA Classic Tour. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports for Tim McCormick and our entire ESPN crew, Dave Barnett in their play so far, but now a new chapter to their season begins. Mizzou starts play. Baylor Bears battle the 9-1 Tigers of Mizzou. The Tigers ranked 13th in the nation. Hello.
continues to pick up where he left off in non-conference play. Arthur Johnson's had six double-doubles in the first ten games. Here you see the big fella taking it to the basket, making good decisions. Here he goes up for one of his blocks. Arthur Johnson doing it at both ends of the floor for the Tigers to win tonight. He's going to have to play big. And meanwhile... One of the officials will put the ball in the air. He's working with Eddie Jackson and Randy Hyerman, and we're underway at the Hearn Center. Baylor with first possession. McKinney for Clemens, and Ricky unloads a three. It's on target. That's a nice ball movement. When Ricky Clemens gets his feet set, he's as good a shooter. Might be on their way with some young talent. Very young basketball team. His top eight players, four sophomores, four juniors. So the future is bright for Baylor basketball. And one of Missouri's bright. Holding now inside for Johnson. Arthur scores his first points of the ball game. Very unselfish balance. That's a very good point. We mentioned they got eight players, four sophomores, four juniors, and a couple of junior college players. How's that for a finish from Paulding? He made no mistake that time. Ricky Paulding takes it to the rack. He can explode. He points two of them courtesy of Ricky Paulding's slam dunk. Second time this season has really been something special for Coach Snyder's team lately. McKinney elevates and hits a three-pointer. Jimmy McKinney just lets the game come to him. That time the young man. Another one of the strengths of Jeffrey Ferguson. He runs the floor very well. A lot of times in sprints, Jeffrey Ferguson will win the sprints. He's 6'10", but he can get up and down the floor. Really fluid for an athlete that's 19 a game. And the last three games, Gary, he's averaged 20 points. 62% and 78% from the free throw line. So Ricky Paulding is really becoming a good basketball player from the mid-range jump shots to the outside the three-point line. Conkey out top. And it's Arthur scoring again. Four for AJ. That, that time Paulding puts it back up and in. Ricky Paulding playing both ends of the floor does a nice Conkey to Bryant. Turn around. An air ball, but Johnson collects, scores, and draws the foul. Arthur Johnson, we missed 22 from the field. Clemens connects from long range. That young man can shoot the ball as good as they are really struggling outside. Their eyes cold, but in their first 11 games, they make an average of about 9.8 a game. Holden prefers the high percentage shot. I'll tell you what, when you take it to the rack, as I said before, no one gets in front of Ricky Pauling. He just jumps right over the top. Ricky Pauling catch here. Sees he's got an open shot on the baseline, just takes it up. Baylor player too late coming over. Kenny Taylor's not going to get in front of Ricky Pauling. Paul goes Baylor's way. Lucas ahead, behind the back. Same in over his head and hold everything. A travel call was whistled. Again. start, leading the Tigers to a 10-point lead over Baylor late in the first half. Iron men on this ball club. Bounce inside, Clemens to Johnson. Boy, you love the fact that Arthur Johnson does a great job of sealing. Clemens, quick move after the stutter step. Ricky Clemens, Rears.com. Arthur makes his free throw. Well, that's what you want the big fellow to do. He's really coming into his own. First half, he has owned the boards. In that intense look, doesn't he? He asks his team to play 40 minutes a night because he's going to coach 40 minutes a night. Every possession he wants. As we approach the one minute mark remaining in this first half, Johnson, a great feed from Crocky, and it counts. One of the strengths of Johnson. Best shot of the half now, or at least try to, with three seconds to go from the corner, a fake, and now a shot from Taylor. And we have reached the break with Missouri owning a 10 point lead. Quinn Snyder's Tigers have 35, the Baylor Bears with 25. And we're back with our halftime show after this at the Hearn Center in Columbia on the Mizzou Television Network. Johnson against Carlton Dotson starts the second half in place of win. No difference. A.J. scores settling harder and harder to, to come on with these guys. Baylor will be a very difficult team when you play them in Waco. They'll do a great job shooting at home because every team shoots basketball team. Well, Lawrence Roberts certainly is a confident player. He had a great freshman season, but he and the Bears have got to find an answer, don't they, defensively? Thirsty could be a deterrent. Absolutely. Good skip pass. Holding. Oh, very nice. Johnson to Paulding in a Tiger basket. Paul Ford for the Missouri Tiger basketball team. Did you know that the average age that kids start drinking in Missouri is 12? Youth involved in mentoring programs are less likely to start using alcohol. 
When you become a mentor, you can change a child's life for good. Help prevent underage drinking. Get involved. And a nine-point lead. Paulding knifes through a couple of defenders and hits. Ricky now. Clemens thought about a three, but instead goes inside to Ferguson. That's Ricky Clemens just being an unselfish basketball player. Ricky Clemens does a great job. Arthur Johnson, let's see if he can get going again from the baseline. Just keep giving it to him, right? That's the one thing that Missouri has at now. Cronky to Bryant. And Trayvon throws it down. That's a big time play. Trayvon Bryant taking it to the right. On this move to the goal. What he does here, he splits the players, does a nice job there. There's no travel there. Trayvon Bryant comes down, goes up strong to the basket. Covered a lot of ground, but I don't think Trayvon walked. Here we go up. Get that little pro hop. You can do that now, Chris. Back when I played, that was traveling. Now they let those players do that. You go in with two feet, you go down straight. Of all-star team that included Bryant from Missouri, Lawrence Roberts from Baylor, the team that toured Scandinavia last summer. How about this? John Lucas, a little 360. Wow. Music playing here at Mizzou with Paulding and Johnson. Features, schedules, statistics, and more. MUTigers.com. Arthur N McKinney gets a screen from Bryant. The ferocious one is Lucas was leveled, and it pays off in a Tiger basket. That's a nice kick out. You mentioned Josh Kroenke goes to the three-pointer for Mizzou, and the Tigers, who had their lead down to seven, now enjoy an 11-point advantage. Coming now, watch Josh. He goes up and attacks the ball. Goes up right there, hits the ball, comes down, does no contact with. The, keep attacking the basket. Bryant does just that, but can't score. Took it up strong. Johnson follows, and Arthur Johnson so big tonight. Tigers try to hold off the Baylor charge here inside of six to play. Holding puts it home for three. Boy, you watch Ricky Pauling shoot that shot now. He's so confident. Last year he had trouble shooting the outside shot. This year, Baylor makes a little run, and the Detroit connection does it. Running on the road is going to be very, very tough this year, especially you go to Texas Tech, you go to Texas, you go to Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Those are tough places to play. It's going to be very difficult, I think, for KU to run the table this year. Missouri from the stripe. Arthur at 53% from the line. Interestingly enough, Missouri is a team 66 to handle. Uh, Bryant kept it alive, though. McKinney, A.J. That's a little no-look pass that time by Jimmy McKinney. A.J. just going to the open spot, but credit Jimmy McKay. Clemens tries to respond. McKinney can't collect it. Bryant does. Jimmy McKinney keeps the ball alive that time. Trayvon Bryant, right spot, right time. Good average. Clemens, nice pass. McKinney wide open. Boy, Jimmy McKinney starting to feel it, doing it at both ends of the floor. Two on Ricky Clemens. On home games, Ricky Clemens goes right up to the line to shoot his free throw on a part, so I like to move myself back. The rule is anyone that shoots above 80% from the free throw line, don't change it. And I'll tell you, if he was geeked up at Iowa in the Tigers' first two road game, that's a pretty good sign. He got a career-high 27 as the Tigers beat the Hawkeyes. They look to hold off the Baylor Bears here tonight. Big 12 play, three minutes to go. Josh Kroenke, our Missouri Heart Center, playing with Heart Award. What you like about Josh, he comes up with the steal, and here he's down on the floor getting after that basketball. Here he goes in, a good, hard, clean foul. You play the game of basketball, you play it the right way. Josh Kroenke burying the three from the outside. Josh Kroenke, eight rebounds. <laughs> 72 Tigers and defend the three-point line. Taylor, three more. You bet. He's on fire right now. It's a 10. Jimmy has an opening. A bounce. Arthur slams through two more. And it counts. Just so what we called. You're going to let Arthur Johnson get some direct. Here comes the help. Boom. Here's a bounce pass. Arthur Johnson right there. Forget about it, folks. Here it comes. It's coming down. 29 for AJ, and he's going to shoot a free throw. Plays. points out of way big fella knocked down that free throw two possession basketball game it's been arthur johnson leading the way the first tiger to hit for 30 since kareem rush had 33 against texas back on march 8 both ends of the floor was there ever any doubt our missouri employers mutual player of the game. basketball player coming into this game he's averaging 15 and nine rebounds that's only going to go up after his 30 15 performance tonight 
Lucas brings it ahead as the final seconds tick away. Kaylee Taylor's three-point shot is no good. Paulding rebounds. And this one is history as Missouri has prevailed, beating Baylor tonight 77 to 69. We'll come back with more from the Hearn Center after this. Building this year as their Orangemen, who have won 10 in a row, take on their first ranked opponent of the season. The Missouri Tigers are number 11. Just the fifth meeting ever between a Missouri watch tonight. Two of the premier forwards in America. Very different styles, but equally good results. And that showman, you're right, but they both have great strength. They attack the rim, and they've got a touch deep. They play on self selfish lead. Just, Solid performers. Just a freshman, Carmelo Anthony, leading the Big East in scoring. Ricky Paulding, one of the great athletes in college basketball, and the Orangemen get the opening tap. And Dan Schultz, that mask off, aren't they? Practice without it yesterday, suffered a broken bone above his eye, a broken sinus. Kid to sign with Missouri in a 30 years. And Quinn Snyder really hoping to tap into that mark. People weren't guarding well. Well, once in a while, he'd come on his life. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the guy they have to guard. Big Arthur Johnson, A.J. Well, they're forcing others to beat them. Look at the speed on Clemens coast to coast. And then that little hesitation about the foul line to part the waters. Great Tigers had noted scores like Kareem Rush and Clarence Gilbert, who really dominated offensively. This Missouri team is a little more balanced. The ball gets spread around to more players than last year. Oh, I, I would agree. See much of it this evening because Syracuse opts for that 2-3. They're getting three free throws here after the Fairfield coach are great pals, and both of them are high energy. Winds them up, and they go for months. Baldwin ties it up. Good start for him, and a good start. For him. Now look at what Missouri has done. The only loss, as we mentioned, to the only ranked team they played, Illinois, in the Bragg and Rice game. Their best start in eight years. They won at Iowa. And Stop penetration, and McNamara turns him into traffic. And McNamara might have gotten away with a bit of a reach in right there. Ferguson the miss, and what a follow slam by Arthur Johnson. And that's because all the attention, the big body, look, nobody touches him. It's not hard to locate him. Would you agree, Dan? <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> With that frame, and if he can dominate on the glass, there are going to be some foul problems, plus points for Missouri. It's on the catch. Now you put a lot of pressure on the inside people. Syracuse up two here in the first game of the big Monday triple header presented by Bud Light. Dan Schulman and Bill Raftery with you. Tell him I read the rule book for tonight. <laughs> Anthony looking to get on track. Leading nice. score in the Big East. And Quinn Snyder said, you got to keep the ball away from him. Because if he gets the ball, he's the largest lead of the night for the Orangemen up by six. Settling, not a good one. Even though it went down, that's not one of those that gets you back healthy. But why not? When you're that deep, Carmelo Anthony for the first time. Probably the most highly hyped incoming freshman. There's Johnson on a nice feet. Beautiful penetration against. Always looking for somebody to talk to. <laughs> Clemens, nice step inside, and the floater drops. Missouri leads. How about his three plays now? The three. The Tommy who's down. Yeah, he, said, yeah, he said Tommy could get down lower than he could. And something Clemens get down low in the lane and then find somebody. Great. And that's the dialogue. And, and you, you mentioned with Michigan State, for example. You know, Tommy Zo has really quality players. Any performer. Of course, experience too with the College of Southern Idaho just yep. understands the game and bumping it again. Yeah, they got Pace. lucky right there, the Tigers did. McKinney for three. Ooh. 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 Uh, neither one of us thought that ball was going on. Oh, huh? Good. <laughs> coming. He is active as of Saturday when Syracuse takes on Pittsburgh on ESPN. Johnson too strong inside for a round. That's tough to do. Johnson putting up some big numbers. Now nine points and eight rebounds already in the first half of this game. Who's that pivot button? Clemens, a long three. What is that? Open up the zone, though. I mean, they should be able to get into the foul line. But they got him. Give it to him. Now turn. Eight footer, yes. Go. Use the big fella. Right up. To pass by both teams on many occasions tonight. 15 footer for Anthony. How about the way he broke down Frankie Field? <laughs> oh, a steal by McNamara. Wow. What a tough play. Quinn holding his head. Momentum swing. The studio. Here's Reese Davis.
for the Badgers. And there's Arthur Johnson inside. Arthur Johnson inside as good as anybody in the Big 12. 30 points and 15 rebounds against Maryland, against Baylor. But tonight in the first half, he's got 11 against Syracuse. And when he establishes his inside game, he's as good as anybody in that conference. But tonight, as you can see him going up and under. He Jim Beheim's got to be happy with it at this point of the game. Fourth has one foul, mm -hmm. and McNeil has one foul. And that was the dilemma against BC, and occasionally yep. uh, as this hurt. <laughs> Well, I see was there. I was there, you know, he, he, he really enjoys this team, that he's so upbeat about it, as yeah. we noted. Here. Balding gets something going for the Tigers. As McKinney penetrates, hangs and hits. Well, that's what you have to do. Attack it like it's a man-to-man, -man, and then if they squeeze your Achilles, fourth really struggled and was booed at times here at the Carrier Dome. But not tonight. Trayvon Bryant, nice move inside. That's nothing worth worse than getting booed. Has matched his season high with 10 points. His career high is a dozen. Now, they didn't double, and he made them pay. Now, that's the first time he's been alone without... You know, McNamara shouldn't have been over there. They didn't need him. Why did he three? He didn't react well at all. He had doubled the ball instead of... Swing. Nice get back. Anthony, mid-range jumper, yes. Oh, my goodness, the nylon. And fourth. Escapol, kind of a foul over you agree? Yeah, I agree. Fourth was holding his neck as he was coming back down the floor as well. Great atmosphere at the Carrier Dome. Denied it a good game. Syracuse leading by four. They're getting offense from somebody you would expect to do. A lot of work offensively in Carmelo Anthony. They're also getting some serious offense. Sure, then they can. Holding tough Pretty. drive. That's what they need. A little action. Go to the rim. And by that, McNamara doesn't look nice. Entry pass. Drive at the lefty. To, to a guy that lost 57. That's right. And they went on a chicken and noodles kick. <laughs> it will be a factor of the Big 12. Tough road game. What do you think? For the Tigers. Lemons, a quick three. That's what he does best. He freezes you. He can get him right back in it. So we still haven't had the under 12 timeout. Well, as mentioned, this is the fifth time Syracuse and Missouri have met. The first time back in 1988 in the semis of the preseason NIT, Doug Smith got it going late, sending the game into overtime for Norm Stewart. But look at this. Sherman Douglas, Stevie Thompson, and the Orangemen win in overtime 86-84. Same suit Payheim has on. <laughs> uh, Norm Stewart. You know, the of you? Why do you have well, to give him some shit? Well, these people you like. You can see three to one twice in the NCAA. Norm, one of the class acts. And great to see or hear today that, that he's in. So Bob Donato, who's working the game as well, told Tim Kelly, who was going on his honeymoon, who's before the uh, tournament started, couldn't, couldn't work because of his injury. All of a sudden, Tim Kelly shows up. He referees the tournament, and his wife hasn't spoken to him since. <laughs> Lemons pushing. Pretty. And the lay-in inside, and it's down to five. You know, fatigue. The last couple of trips now, Syracuse. The first seven games of the season until Jimmy McKinney took over. And now McKinney's going to come in, and Gronk will go out. It's the passing lane. Anthony for three. Well, they can really burn you. Quinn with the quick timeout. They can score in bunches. Lemons looking inside for Young. That's a good thrust off the timeout. Clemens broke the D with the dribble. Do force Ford to make a decision. He puts it up in a block by Bryant. The late gate at 9 Eastern. Vandy shocked Alabama. Absolutely great lead. Vandy will give him a run. Kentucky, they shoot the ball. But remember years ago, Syracuse had the rep of not being a good free throw shooting yeah. team. But guys like Matt Gamera are going to ruin that image. Well, you know, when Clemens takes a shot, floater, jumper, doesn't matter. Donkey limping just a little bit. He's got a couple of bad knees. High low. Forget it. Yeah. 6 8 against 6 4. How did Clemens get matched up on him? In addition to 11 points, Craig Ford has four assists in this game. Clemens with another long range three. And a timeout. 127 in eternity when you're ahead. Got his guys in the right spot looking for a pick. Clemens, how about I guess, this? I guess that's a good shot. Well, he, he had the option of going either way. They had set up a pick on either side. And that should do it. Solid performance. The zone. Stymian, Missouri. 
The Orangemen still on ranks, but now 11 and 1. Up a win. Welcome to Big Monday, presented by Bud Light. Number 11, Kansas, plays host to number 22, Missouri. It's all a part of rivalry, re presented by Kroenke. Heinrich gets up close to Kroenke's an outside shooter. Alding knocks down the three. Now, one of the things, Johnson, and he's seeing the ball so much more this year than he did in his first two years at yeah, Missouri. No good face up, Trayvon Bryant, who's very good, soft touch. He's a good catch. He's a guy that has to have good ball games. Doesn't have to have 15 points and 15 rebounds, but a 10 and an 8, 8 and 10, things like fans expected. Ricky Paulding to kind of take over for Kareem Rush, but sometimes it's not that easy. Paulding to the bench, and Nash checks in replacing him, and as John mentioned, Gray's off to a solid start with a couple of big screens and also a couple of big assists. Kenny with the bouncer inside and then the skip pass. Kroenke inside to Johnson. Nice ball movement. Tigers and it pays dividends. Yeah, you mentioned it, so there's not an easy basket. Look where Arthur Johnson has Jeff Gray in the paint. AJ will score most of those baskets. Trayvon Bryant tries to reverse it. That's a tough shot for a lefty. Tip inside. Art Johnson. Big man, you have to keep it. Watch for the quick pop out in the shot. Holding under duress. Wow, what a and tough he hands it. The clock. Watch this. Heinrich all over Ricky Paulding. Gets his feet set. Good release. Bottom. You can see it at Missouri to be. Clements pulls up. Hard in the shot. Gets it to go. Hard off the back iron and got a good layup. Nine point ball nice game. Play. Mark Johnson at the other end, and that'll quiet the crowd. Thomason. You take a look at the pass. Easy finish for Johnson. He will not have many easy looks in this ball game tonight. Well, he's right here. We'll take some of that pain away. Yeah, yeah, the pain shows up after the game. McKinney for three. Got a he great stroke. Nails it, and way outside on that one. Since I said, oh, that's my. almost untied him. Here's McKinney just measuring up Aaron Miles. Now McKinney, good solid size at 6'3 and a half, 200 pounds. Boy, Arthur Follow. Johnson staying with it. Got it blocked once. Johnson. Pretty good battle on both ends. I know if uh, Quinn Snyder wanted, he thought Heinrich had possession. Steve Wilmer said no. Three. Wow. Clemens. Shoot ahead of the clock. Good that block. Blocked by Heinrich. Collison comes up with it. Two seconds. One second. Good defense by Heinrich. To Reese and Digger with the Mass Mutual. Two and just have all you. It's tough being a college student overall and just being a student athlete is really tough. And like I said, you're not not able to hold a job or anything. I think it would be nice to, to get some sort of reward. Jay-Z, the blueprint. I just think it was a, a great album. He really played everything together. He just, he just came out really strong. So I, I like listening to Jay-Z. You know Ricky Pauling a little better, and he'd like to introduce himself to the Jayhawks again in the second half. His Tigers are down by five. Second half coming up after this. Yeah. Kansas was 0-3, and it was all Jeff Gray. Oh, what a tough shot by Arthur Johnson. The turn to face his teammates for open looks. Clemens can't leave him with, with that much space. Earlier, Clemens, too much space. Miles went underneath the pick, and you can't allow Ricky Clemens that much time in the next possession down. And Clemens quickly to the other end. Trey McKinney. Ricky Clemens quick with the basketball. You've got to honor him when he penetrates. And Jimmy McKinney. Just a freshman. Young gets it back for the Tigers. And he'll put up a shot and gets it to go. Wow. Young doesn't score a lot of points. And an odd look. Back to Kroenke in the corner. Trayvon Bryant out on top. Clemens for three. It's really nice ball move. Trayvon Bryant had two looks, but not good enough. Four for KU. But as John mentioned, Missouri just simply will not go away. And there's Clemens. And this is what you were talking about. He just wants the basketball. Yeah, Ricky Clemens starting to heat up. He is 4 of 11 from beyond the three-point arc. Langford has to go to the bench. It's his uh, third personal. This is where you, you know he's a good shooter. The, the way he moves, loves to go to his left, opens up the later half of that year. Well, that's a tough shot. 
It is a tough shot. 52 to early. And then in this ballgame. Holding skies for the rebound, and he's not scoreless any longer in the second half. That's a big one. And it's a good basket to score too easily. McKinney gets him in the air, pulls up from about five, knocks it down. Holding misses the front end, gets the long carom, and Arthur Johnson jams it back home. Yeah, perfect. Uh, if you're going to miss, it might as well be a long. Strong to the hook, McKinney. How about. Strong to the hook, McKinney. How about the freshman? Oh, starter on this ball club for the last few ballgames. Oh, what a three. Tough and he shot. nails it. My goodness. Shot clock is at nine. Paulding, strong to the glass. Oh, oh a tough shot. And knocks it down, and he'll go to the free throw line. Oh, now watch the weak side help. Here's Nash, and here comes Collison. Over the top, soft touch. What you could see, Quinn Snyder. Don't tell anybody that his kids were not well prepared to come in here to Allen Fieldhouse and played. They have really acquitted him, saw it the whole way. Clemens with the left hand and he scores it. Tough shot. Oh my goodness. He left in the ball game. Four point contest and the soft running jumping is Paulding gets it to go down. Two minutes in the ball game. 71-65 Kansas. The bouncer to Bryant and it'll jam it home. What a play by Clemens. 65 Kansas. The bouncer to Bryant and it'll jam it home. What a play by Clemens. Put it on the floor. Actually good then that he was on the line. Rattles this one down. Silences the possession. They ran the clock down but too far down. Paul Bean gets them both. Let's take a timeout. Point, Kansas lead. Let's take a break. Well, Kansas tonight, only 5 of 12 from the free throw line. Make it 6 of 13. They are up and trying to be the sixth defender. Paulding drives it. Can't get it to go with short. Nash. Yeah, Quinn Snyder's ball club came out at the second half and really just never gave up and never went away. You mentioned, Ron, they were down 13, and then they simply... Exploded on the offensive end. Jimmy McKinney, the freshman, has been outstanding. Paulding has scored. Clemens has hit some impossible shots. They have just fought. 83% free throw shooter made two big ones in the win against Colorado on Saturday. The outside. Not there. The ball is tipped around on the floor. Kansas comes up with it. Good ball. Snyder starts to walk to midcourt. This one is over. Kansas has handed him his fourth straight loss here at Allen Fieldhouse. Our final score, Kansas 76 and Missouri 70. Coming up next is Sports Center, Columbia, Missouri, 49 to 44. Homestanding Tigers leading this one. In. This is a turnover number seven against Texas Tech. Baldwin left alone. And then he pumped it and took it back up to score. And you could hear the crowd uh, almost. Oh, nice cut, nice give, and the dunk, the finisher by Trayvon Bryant. That's unselfish play by John. Hey, look at the backdoor cut by Kroggy. This is a nice pass from Arthur Johnson. Quickly out of his hands to Trayvon Bryant. Go up. Doesn't allow a defender usually to, to block the shot or even bother him. Arthur Johnson muscles his way up over Storazinski. And Bobby the steals that uh, Texas Tech was having. They have struggled just stopping or even containing this Missouri team in the half-court set. I think the Red Raiders have to get much more. Johnson. Good find by Paulding, and the reason was Jimmy McKinney cleared out. He's coming up the floor. You see McKinney cleared the way. Emmett went with him a little bit. Arthur Johnson, they over on the wing. Quick first step. Paulding, the runner, knocks it down. Boy, he's shown some extraordinary touch in the second hand. And that happened right in front of Quinn Snyder, and Quinn has walked over. It's it. Three. All right, it's a conference game. And somehow people know how to uh, come up big. Kareem Teams Rush. love uh, their home court. There's uh, Kareem Rush back there on the All-Star break. You know, I, I told you at halftime, Terry Johnson doesn't see the shot clock. It's a two, it's a three, and he got it just before the thing went off. Probably heard the teammates on the sideline. Shot clock running down. 
Arthur Johnson was right in front of his teammates on the bench, and I believe they gave him an indication. Paulding, they leave him alone, and he switches it. But here's the double team with Will Chavis so again, 5-9-5. Take a look, Chavis, and it doesn't bother Arthur Johnson. They've either got to come with bigger guys or not come at all. Paulding with the wide open look, the Tigers continue to shoot. Brian. Literally let the defenders go over him, John, and then took it back up. One of the things I talked to him about before the ball game, uh, John, was his quick release. I said, where does it come from? Didn't he always yeah, say championship well, games? Pretty impressive last night. That Allen Fieldhouse with 14 points. So the second time out, Missouri trying to own this one without any added pressure. They're up by a dozen. <laughs> Well, and I do not doubt uh, 1,000 games at a base off something. And his team, I tell you what, right now he's probably coaching you. The flow of scoring the basketball. You know, I think I remember uh, Coach Knight saying to somebody after that game, looking for some production outside of Powell and Emmett to help this ball club. Well, face. Balding got the second one. Total of 20 points for him. Good eight, and they have a home game with Oklahoma, and then they travel to Texas. In fact, they've got Texas twice. 8 one Chavis will be outside. Can't get it. Knocked away, and that one is blocked by Arthur Johnson. For him. And only in his junior season. So. He's got soft hands, quick hands. Usually, as great shot blockers do, stays, keeps his body. Where lets him commit first. I think Arthur has surpassed my former teammate, Steve Stepanovich, early in this season. Standing and applauding here at the Hearn Center, and for very good reason. This was an impressive performance by the Missouri Tigers. Maybe the best ball game on the offensive end they've played all season. Okay, John, as far as the conference is concerned, and we talked about Texas A&M. They can't rest on their laurels going on the road day after tomorrow. Well, it jumps the Tigers up to 5-3, and three, gives them a game up on Colorado, but uh, a big win. Texas Tech, the Missouri knew how important this game was, not only to themselves, but to that Red Raider ball club. Show our final score. Last Saturday when Ricky Clemens broke his hand. Broke his hand, nobody knew it. He continued to play, and he'll play tonight. He's in the starting lineup. He's got a Band-Aid, and he's got a patch on the back of his hand, left-handed. He's right-handed, it won't bother his shooting. It may pass, bother him a little bit passing and catching the ball. It's the time of year you have to play with pain. Current center tonight, the third-ranked Sooners against the upset-minded Missouri Tigers. Here are the starting lineups. For Oklahoma, Ebi Ara back in the starting lineup. He did that last Sunday against Kansas. They responded very well. And for Missouri, you see Ricky Clemens also starting tonight despite that. Did you look at Kelvin Sampson? A nine-game winning streak for OU against Mizzou. That's his career record against the Tigers. It's a matter of matching Oklahoma's intensity, John. Yeah. They come after you. No doubt about it. This is a ball club again. After their win against Kansas, they were so impressive in that victory. They come in here with a little bit of a swagger. They're a team that's confident. They're tough. Mentally, they're tough. Physically, they're tough. Missouri's going to have to match that here. Now, the Tigers, perfect 13-0 on this home floor this season. And the tip goes the way of the Tigers. Fathers him at all. Missouri goes inside. Challenge the ball. Big time play by Young. Wow, what a start. Missouri goes inside, challenge the ball, big time play by Young. Wow, what a start. The freshman getting a start over. Jabari Brown simply shook his head with a smile. Patient on the offensive end. This time they put it to Kevin Young, the freshman, who doesn't score a lot of points. No double team, Jabari Brown. Clemens first shot. Looking good. They are broken. But Games over 15 points of all game. Tough shot for Clemens. Nice rebound by Arthur Johnson. Short. Getting on the other end. Lays it in. Well, Sooners have been patient. The shot. Ryan. He was working on that shot during warm-ups. Well, is a pretty good face-up shooter. Now he shoots 30. Check out this three-point shot. Trayvon Bryant. You at least want someone out there with a hand in his face, whether it was Gilbert or Zendrick. Both guys stayed on Arthur. 
after that huge game against Missouri. Clemens. A little zone defense from underneath out of bounds. Uh, Goodman drives by Price and Kroenke. Good pass to Arthur Johnson. Kroenke had seven floor and have his guys be aggressive off the dribble. Almost a dribble weave and Kroenke puts it perfectly on the floor for Arthur Johnson who has the finish. Not a bad shot. Paulding's got size advantage over Price. We took him baseline, just jumped over the top. We'll take a look at that number. Hard to win. And another turnover. You know, Kelvin Quantas White. That may, oh, it's blocked by Arthur Johnson. But well, what a great block, and I'll tell you why. Quantas White was smart enough to take it into the big man and try to just get his body in so that, watch him go to the side, perfect. Thinks he's got a layup. Outstanding block. Patient, 0 for 3, but just hesitant to release it. This guy's not. Clemens is feeling it. He will not hesitate, and when he gets on a roll, he's a great shooter. He's fired up, and so is this crowd. Dribble, the quick release. White not even close. Take a look at the Sooners, the last possession. A lot of standing, and the movement is just not as, as crisp as we normally see it. Finally, Ara makes a good move, but but that shot is, is shot with the arms. I mean, there's not a wrist shot. Every Ara Johnson, but White was at the top of the key. He made a dead sprint. That's a great pass. That's a that's a defense that's not ready. A gimme on the inbounds block. Alice Price, catch and release. This kid is a special player. And he's had a great year, 33 against UConn. Then he went up to Iowa State, knocked in nine threes in that ball game in 31. Trayvon Bryant again. Ricky Paulding's been very quiet until now. Degree of difficulty. Ricky Paulding was scoreless until this maneuver. Acrobatic, yes, successful, you bet. Well, take a look at the alert play by Josh Kroenke. Once the official puts it in play, it's in play. He hands it. Oklahoma got caught standing around, and you want a guy that can take it out and see the floor. Next time down, Trayvon Bryant backs Kevin Book out in, and really the Tigers have been able to. Holding. Working against Alexander. Two for his last two. Well, simple one-on-one -on -one basketball. Cleared it out. Surprise. All tied up. One is wide, by the way. Got the ball extremely well the last few weeks. Missouri back on top, 38 30. Columbia. Book out back in. Paulding. String music for Ricky Paulding. Back to a four point game. Tank. Book out now. Watch out. Two on one. Clemens. That's a tough shot. They love it in Columbia. AJ and Book out her back. Go bodies. Ricky. Two for. Turns his head, doesn't get back in time. Split second, Paulding knocks it in. Kelvin Sampson, timeout, and he was right in Ebby Ross face. Throws in then two three pointers, eight points in the last couple possessions when he was in there. I think he's trying to take over offensively. Another good move. Paulding wants the matchup against Aquinas White or House Price because they're a little bit shorter. He can go in and take that fade away. Arthur Johnson decided to pull it out. Instead of banging, he pulled it out. In for Missouri. Ricky Paulding and Arthur Johnson. This time, Big Arthur instead of backing in, backing in, which he has had a tough time doing against Bookout. Simple turn, face, knocks it in. We'll let it go. Quickly an inbounds play. Wow, what a shot. Trayvon Bryant. 
Johnson now bang with Gilbert. Boy, he laid a shoulder into it. Bryant slams it down. Good pass. I think Johnson got away maybe with an offensive foul on the bump. Tigers on a roll. Basketball fake. There's a pickup again. What a good pass. Might have gotten away with a bump. Now, if you're Missouri, the bench is fine to get excited, but on the floor, you got to keep your composure. What a pass. And then the ball fake. Good finish by Bryant. Levon Bryant, good face up. Now the defender becomes kind of on his heel. Arthur Johnson, big time offensive rebound in the hoop. What a touch. Price trying to. Falling back to Clements. Trayvon Bryant again. Very good ball movement. And Clemens, when he put it on the floor, he almost got it to the rim. The defense has to help out. Easy play. Missouri on top by 11. 2.45 to play at Hearns. 59.48, 2.45 left. Watch the patience on the offensive end. Body movement ball movement. You want the defense to adjust. Clemens puts it on the floor. Bryant with another easy finish. Tigers have been patient, Doug, on the offensive end. And really, they've had touches to Ricky Paulding and Arthur Johnson. And Johnson has been patient. Remember when he was just backing in, backing in? Now he's facing up, taking the shot, making the pass. He has 16 points, nine rebounds. He leads the league with 14 double-doubles. He will soon probably have 15. Another big offensive rebound there. Point game. You know, think of Oklahoma knocking off Kansas on Sunday to have a share of the conference lead. Kansas tournament or NCAA play. There's too many good games left to, to figure out where these teams will fall. Missouri. Huge win if Missouri can hold on. And when he's making free throws, what a plus. He's a uh, different from a year ago. Uh, he's urging his teammates on. He's really kind of leader yeah, on this more, team. more leadership. And again, two junior leaders took over. And Cal a big for the Sooners. You beat a Kansas team on Sunday. You get yourself in the position. To make, and Missouri didn't allow him to get it. And that's it. Well, unfortunately, they're going to rush the floor. Take cover. Mizzou has beaten Oklahoma This snaps this nine-game losing streak to the Sooners. What does all this mean? Missouri wins at 67-52. Missouri had lost nine in a row to Oklahoma. A couple of this with Kansas. A Colorado game. We just said it's, you know, they were riding in the back seat of the car last year. Now they're driving it. And both of them just stepped up. And uh, that's the kind of leadership we need from our juniors. Question coming in the ball game, obviously. Could you match Oklahoma's toughness? I thought Kevin Young, even though he got foul trouble, Trayvon, everybody inside really got after it. Well, Kevin really started the game like that. I thought that was a huge play. It gave us a big lift, and Oklahoma's a great team. And it's, uh, when you have to play against those people in your league all the time, you either get tougher or you, or you keep losing. And Outstanding win. Uh, good luck. Rest of the way. Thanks, John. Now let's go back to Doug Bell. All right, John, thank you. Again, thanks for joining us for Big 12 Baskets. You know, our two, our two real, the two guys that have to lead this team in A.J. and Ricky, stepped up tonight at those points in the game and we talked about it this week that, uh, that you know they were riding in the back seat of the car last year and now they're you know, now they're driving and it requires something different from each one of them uh, as from a leadership standpoint for the team and i thought they showed that on the floor tonight each coliseum in manhattan kansas but inside things are heating up as the missouri tigers come to town coming off a great win at home over Oklahoma, they tangle today with Kansas State's Wildcats in Big 12 Conference basketball play. And his staff, a hardworking staff, 
Well, that's Paulding. What a great move down on the baseline. Well, mentioned, Paulding. mentioned Paulding had the great day against Kansas State. I was surprised that he was the coach that came up with it. Pullman. And Missouri starting to find the bucket now. The four four times. Kinds of problems, but they've been primarily problems on the offensive end. Their defense has remained steady during this tough streak. Jim McKinney knocks down the tray, and Missouri takes the lead. 15 to 18, maybe 20 shots per contest. Deadly three-point shooter, 46% from three-point range. There's a good shot right there. Well, Jimmy McKinney, what an athlete he is. Down inside, Demarcus Hayden taken away by Missouri. Clemens, great dig to McKinney. Oh, what a pass. And Jimmy McKinney is going to go to the line. Guys out here with McKinney and Clemens running it. No-look bounce pass. Perfectly placed right in the hands of the... Wing on the left side, good finish. Jimmy McKinney, the freshman out of St. Louis, talking about they're not going to be playing at home in the tournament. They just have to find ways to win away from Columbia. That'll help. Three-point play from Jimmy McKinney. He has eight points already in this game. McKinney. Oh, what a nice shot, Ricky Paulding. Ricky Paulding really playing well over the Kansas State bench. He'll draw man-to-man -man coverage against Paulding. He was terrific in the game in midweek at Nebraska. Arthur Johnson buried a little jump hook. He's great at that shot down there. He had that shot when he came to Missouri. Now he can also. The high school in Benton Harbor, Michigan. Six Williams, the missile twins, when they played here. In those uniforms, they did not have the three-point line. But two better shooters have ever played together on a college team than they were. There's the face up. He'll take that shot now at about 10 feet out. McKinney wide open and stuck it. He's having a pretty good half. McKinney and Bryant had some big shots in that Oklahoma game. Clocky got a good look, but knocked it down. Josh Clocky can shoot the three about as well as anybody. They're getting ball much for Missouri yet. There's Trayvon Bryant. Didn't finish it, got his own rebound and put it back. Hayden, the defender that time, took the high side trying to deny the bat. Not get a shot. K State with an 8 0 run here in the last minute and a half, and that time, wide open inside was Arthur Johnson. He has six points. He may never see time. And could shoot three on the other things. Trayvon Bryant watched out a three. He has five points. And how about his game? Well, we've had a lot of talks yesterday today about K State doesn't really have a go to guy. They do right now in Seabrand. And there's Ricky Clemens getting his fourth point of the ball game on the drive. And we're oh, he now has 11 points. Kansas State's lead is three, five seconds left and a half. Clemens might tie it right here. He got fouled on a three point shot. He got hit from behind with 2.3 seconds. I agree with you 100%. He knows. Use it at the end of the game. They can use it any time during the game for the three point. Now Clemens has a chance to tie it. Coming up in our halftime report, report from Lawrence talking about Oklahoma's road woes. Clemens knocks down three free throws and offsets the three from Gilson to Jesus. And we'll see if Kansas State can get the shot away. They both in time. And we're going to halftime in Manhattan, right where we started, dead even. But not 0-0, zero, zero, it's 37-37. We have a tie. So we like you to pull off and save the foul. Oh, what a wild scramble. We've got one hole. Ricky Pauling hits the deck hard. Wilson to Jesus. Found him as he went for the shot, not intentional. Arthur Johnson's upset with the action there. Paulding hit the floor hard, gets up smiling. And Arthur Johnson was very quick, wanting to get there and defend the team. On the floor, I think everybody a little more concerned about players hitting the deck after what happened to Jake Muleheisen of Nebraska the first weekend of conference play. As Jake broke his hip and was out for the entire season, although he was expected a full recovery from that injury, but similar kind of play there. That's strategy. Josh Cronkey. Knocked it down. That's not easy to do coming off the bench to shoot. Pasco and Frank Richards came out of the Kansas State lineup now. Might be a bold statement. Paulding with a tough, tough shot gets it. Yeah, that tells you three. One of five, Kansas State 0 for 6. Ricky Paulding with a drive and a bucket and a foul. Ricky Paulding. Wing, Kansas State gets tied up defensively. Paulding so quick with that first step. Trying to match Missouri's biggest lead of the game does. It's five point margin now. 
holding with them. They're having trouble getting the ball down there. They do get it there now to Trayvon Bryant with a nice left-handed reverse for how, a seven. How about the pass from Jimmy McKinney? He was sometimes when you're having shooting problems, you can't get too close. That's Kansas true. State has had their share of those. Trayvon Bryant didn't need to get close at all. He knocks down his ninth point. And Mizzou goes back in front by two. Murray at the other end. Got a dish to Paulding. Great work by Missouri. Ricky Paulding has ten free throw line. Tavon Bryant has ten points now. Has gone a little cold. McKinney. Paulding might be the guy to change it, and he does. That's a three-point goal. Ricky Paulding now has needed a basket. Looking to Ricky Paulding. Arthur Johnson now has three fouls. Was at Dallas American Airlines Arena, March 13th through the 16th. For information on tickets, lock on to Big 12 Sports. Presence inside is going to be on Trayvon Bryant, who has the ball. Has the ball, took it to the rack to Miss Young off the glass with a rebound. Big bucket. Clemens and Paulding. Miss Clemens got a look. Stop it. He's had an itchy trigger finger for a while here now. Yeah, from the time he stepped. Hands it to Jimmy McKinney. Comes out from behind the screen, down the lane, throws it up and gets it. Matt Seabrand had the rotation defensively that time for Kansas State. And this kind of lit up the next couple times down the floor for Missouri. He wants the ball back. Got the shot from the corner. Got it. Called the shot, partner. Well, his teammates called the shot when they. Ellis is on Clemens. Pauling got the shot, was fouled, and made the bucket. Offensive player from the opponent. There he is leaning into Ricky Paulden just inside the key. Got that one and he'll have a. Paulding with the old fashioned three point play. Two three zone. Seabrand spinning move to the bucket and he got it. Just slipped right around Arthur Johnson. Really quick with his back to the basket. He's got to do a good job of taking care of it. Regardless of which team you're on. Paulding, they ran away and left him, and he stuck a three. Oh, they ran off. Seabrack came out to get him, then backed off. It wasn't his man. And a pass go back to the basket. Leans in and missed the shot. Rebound Bryant. Mizzou has a five-point lead in the ball with 40. Paulding. Paulding keeps his dribble alive. And CK State back into that zone defense. Well inside that three-point line. That's an uncontested shot from Ricky Paulding. He's got to love that one. 16 of those points have come in this half. Now 17. K State having trouble. The look on Jim Roller's face kind of says it all. He has seen this before this year. His team battled hard for the last few minutes. And then the game got away from him at the base of the thumb. Between the thumb and the wrist. It's not all purple here in the building here this afternoon. Oh, yeah, the Tiger team had a little trouble making that trip yesterday. Round up pressing and getting here at 12.45 this morning. Now, 23 in the game today. Well, he comes into the ballgame knowing he's going to be a key guy for his team. That's a tough shot here early in the second half. Missouri is having trouble getting shots at all, but Ricky Paulding and uh, Trayvon Bryant early in the second half got Missouri going to where they're a flip out to some comfortable leads. Ricky really Paulding has been consistent through the entire last 20 minutes. You can only tape it and pad it so much. Still got to deal with the, the pain from the broken, broken bone. Clemens, perfect to the line on the day, six for six. Mizzou by nine, nine going to matter, except for the final score. There are four seconds to play. And they throw it in bounds to Jimmy McKinney. Back to Trayvon Bryant it goes, and the game is over. Missouri has won it. 77-70. The Tigers change their record now to 18 and 7 on the year, 9 and 5 in conference play. While Kansas State falls to 12 and 15, 3 and 11 in conference play. So a road win for the Tigers. That's the final here. We'll get you back to Studio 66 after the break. 77 the upset of the Missouri Tigers who had their eye on the NCAA tournament. In the opener today, Iowa State very by the ball. You know, he's only had 20 points in the last three games total. He has to get touches inside. They cannot forget about him. You know, this Missouri team is a team that can score the points from the outside, but you have to start it on the inside. When Arthur Johnson gets position on the blocks, he cannot be stopped. And they have to. Zoo and Nebraska next from Dallas. 
maybe the best arena in the country. For Nebraska, Drevo, Turek, Clemens, Sims, and Johnson. For Missouri, Trayvon Bryan. Uh, exciting. Uh, the great crowd, great atmosphere, especially this year. They played the Tigers this season. They double teamed Arthur Johnson and made Missouri shoot threes. The Tigers were 13 to 36 behind the three point line that ball game. Clemens hits. Johnson gets matched up. Drevo likes to work from the outside in. Turek goes in against Johnson with the left hand and picks up the first points. At that time, when their matchup in the Hearn Center, McKinney was 3 of 11 beyond the three point line. Nebraska invited Missouri to take. Do a little better job with your feet. Yeah, it's footwork and it's uh, not reaching. He's a good shot blocker, but when you points, over nine rebounds a game, 15 double doubles. Now he has struggled. Last three ball games only averaging seven officials. Curtis Shaw, the referee. Drevo on the free throw. Outstanding. He's averaged 19 in the two ball games against Missouri and Lincoln at 24. Clemens, there's Drevo. And you see the stroke. Nebraska's got a good feeling. Long rebound chase down. Yeah, Missouri looks. Uh, Shoes are in concrete or something. Not going after loose balls. Cornhuskers off to a great start. And they want to talk about it right now. They just took a 30 second. Iowa State and Lincoln. They lost their last two on the road, but but as a, you've won two of your last four. They struggled away from the Devaney Center, which uh, most of these teams struggled on the road all season. Reward, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you win and it's okay. They get to face camp. Well, oh, what a shot. How about this? What a shot. Got a ton of work to do. Well, you want to know how patient the Tigers will be on the offensive end to try to get a basket. Good follow there by Paul. And Clemens had a shot block. And Lincoln High School. <laughs> Big ball for 11 points a game. Got to work on the shooting, obviously. Good touch there. He got a shooter's roll out of that. Percent in the NBA. And with that cock of the wrist and the spin of the ball underhand, you, you actually the ball sits on the rim line and it gives a better shot. Another good hoop from Drevo. You said that you didn't. If you missed the one and one, you would line up on the on the Hearn Center floor and had to sprint to section D in 30 <laughs> seconds and then back and forth. Yeah, they knocked in. They took 36 attempts that ball game. Oh, what a tough basket. <laughs> he got it off the glass and made it. Take the blow and guys hanging on and still get it up on that rim. A little emotion from Arthur Johnson. The Tigers are, are searching for some emotion early in this ballgame. The foul on Brian Conklin, three point play, Arthur Johnson, he has five. Let's go back now on the Drevo quick shot. Holding, had a look, takes it down the lane. Oh, tough. Oh, oh, what a hoop. I thought he was going to pass it when he <laughs> wrapped it under the arm. <laughs> Oh. Take a look at Ricky Paulding on the finish. Here's right. I thought he's going to pass this ball. Goes underneath the arm and then lays it in. Oh, what a finish. Wasn't that great? Well, Paulding has, a, you know, such a solid player. He gets a lot of credit for being a spectacular finisher, but he is a good thing to hear. I'm not sure where uh, any projections would have been, how high he could have gone in the draft. Piankowski and Strickland. They were all great collegiate players for the Cornhuskers. They've all done well. Yeah, now the Cornhuskers in a 2-3 zone. Big possession here offensively. Tigers are now back in this game. Nebraska's got days. Now he's fine. Oh, what a crossover. Oh, Clemens, what a move. A little crossover dribble. Good finish. Hey, Lewis on the all-freshman team in the Big 12 Conference this year, deservedly so. Quinn Snyder moved Jim Golden with the dribble. Get inside, score. Fought through an injury earlier this year. He had to play with a mask on because of a fractured sinus. And only a lot of consistent minutes to get his game probably going to the offensive end. Good help defense. It's a big board down inside. That was Kevin Young that got it done. Good help by Conklin as Pauling beat his man off the dribble, but then he played defense long. Arthur Johnson, not the game that man. Good defense by Johnson on Clinton. Ricky Paulding has got 10. And that's why this Tiger team is so, covering McKinney outside. Now they find Arthur Johnson with a little turnaround. Missed it all, but Trayvon Bryant there to stick it right back in. Well, fortunate Trayvon break and then it didn't hit the rim or anything. So uh, a and m 97-70 in the first game today. Trayvon Bryant came back, got the second free throw. He has five, and we are tied. At one point, Nebraska led 20 to 4. Missouri's rallied, and they trail by just. He's better off the dribble in the mid-range game. There's a guy that just dominated the team of college ranks. There's McKinney getting his first bucket of the game. And you saw where there's Jimmy yeah. McKinney's shot. Think of Tim Barnes, how he struggled early in the Big 12 and really didn't get it going until the last couple weeks. Rebound. 
Eric Johnson's fifth rebound. Oh, what a shot. <laughs> what a shot. You know, Paulding just simply ran up. That comes and goes. I mean, you might make two or three in a row. Just hard to stay consistent with it. Better stroke. He has not been able to finish either one. That time, I think he could have just used a jump stop and just planted himself and scored. Now you got a four-point swing. Brandon Clemens misses on the one end. And Congratulations to his ball club. He's now in the NCAA tournament. He'll yeah, tell you today that that was a Oh, bad. my. Left-handed. Ricky Clemens with the cast and all. What a Cronky. Arthur Johnson. Cornhuskers have done a nice job getting back defensively, not allowing oh, very yeah. easy and early looks. Oh, good follow by Paul. Ricky Paul has a great stick back. No block out. Everybody's watching the basketball. Paulding just slides right in there. Good follow. That pass kind of deflected. McKinney bangs it into the lane, takes the jump shot, makes it, and has to hitch his pants back up again. Paulding gets it back. Now McKinney. Long time. McKinney and he knocks down a three. Well, not worried about uh, the floor. Takes a seat. Turek back in. Good look down inside. Ricky Paulding on a tough bucket for him. Good pass. Penny. Paulding. Arthur Johnson with a turnaround and stuck it. He has eight. Pretty solid break. Clemens fired a fastball to Arthur Johnson who stuck it. He's got ten points. Again, what a nice play from Ricky. It is quick. Tell you what, it's fast. Arthur lean in. Anchor. Arthur Johnson. Dozen points for him. Good hands by Ricky Clemens coming from behind. There you go. Have a little fun. Woo woo. Billy. Gone cold. Now shooting 29% from the field. After a hot pass some summer work to do to get better than that. Holding great. great. Pass. Wow, what a pass. Shot or can I put it on the floor to go? He had the jump shot. Hesitated. Might not have had control of the basketball. Then he finds teammate Arthur Johnson. What a good play. This is just a very good basketball play. Arthur Johnson now. Come out of letting him play. The coach is letting him play in this one. Arthur Johnson, another great bucket. There's only been one team time strike here. They're led by 11 players. to get running clock. Ricky Baldwin says, I think I got a shot. When he penetrated and went to the basket and broke his hip. And been out the rest of the conference games. They shot over 79% from the foul And normally they split during yeah. the season. Both teams, uh, again, very similar to a lot of the teams in the league. Struggle on the road. But uh, Kansas State, uh, chip on their shoulder. They want to prove to people that they're better than uh, away from Boulder than everybody says than what they played this afternoon. You know, it's really interesting. Teams battle like heck to get those four buys. And then some coaches say, well, I'd better play the first day. <laughs> <laughs> Nate Johnson missed. Arthur Johnson, and the game is over. Missouri advances 70-61. The Tigers beat Nebraska here in the first round of the Big 12 tournament, so it'll be Missouri and Oklahoma State tomorrow. John, Missouri did what they had to do. They advanced. Yeah, did what they, they weren't very good. That first five minutes, they were ugly. The Cornhuskers probably played the best basketball they had all season long. They couldn't sustain it, uh, typical of how their season went. Again, the final here, 70-61, Missouri beats Nebraska and advances to the next round. This Forget for the Missouri Tigers, winners yesterday in the opening round against the fourth-seeded Oklahoma State Cowboys. Yesterday, Arthur Johnson, he gets 18 points yesterday against Nebraska. He gets position inside. He is going to score. How about this? Five blocks in this game, four of them in the first half against Nebraska. From a big man to the left. And it's landed in Big D at the American Airlines Center in the matchup in game two on day two. The Missouri Tigers and the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Hi, everybody. Fred one rebounds his first double-double of the year last night as Missouri beat Nebraska. You know, the matchup. So 
Keep an eye on it. We'll see how the officials call. One tough shot. Rainbow from the deep corner wouldn't fall, but Arthur Johnson right there for the step back. Better keep a body on Big AJ. Uh, watch this. Watch this. We got left off. Oh! <laughs> Melvin Sanders. Best defender in the Big 12. Look at that 2-3 zone. Cowboys not a great shooting team. Clemens got a look. Got a bucket. Three for Ricky Clemens. Deep range for Ricky Clemens. Caused that shot to miss. Clemens. Clemens works against that one. That's a quick move. Oh, oh, oh. In fact, if Andre Williams is going to try to score. Well, they got McKinney all alone, and they buried a three. Missouri's in front. Jimmy McKinney's first bucket. Good start from a defensive team, all led by the center, Arthur Johnson. Great shot blocker. Once they get it, they like to push and find openings. And you cannot allow McKinney, anybody holding McKinney or Clemens to get their feet. On one, back to Sanders, and he just gave it a little finger roll that didn't go, and Gadsden got the tip. Boy, the active. And you, when you watch Trayvon Bryan shoot, it surprises you that he misses so many free throws. He's got a great stroke. Three on three. He's going to take a pull up jumper in this. Arthur Johnson battles down low and gets it. Betty Sutton won't be happy. He's going to call timeout. And here's why Tony Allen lost. He just loses the ball. Now he's going to stand and, and talk to the official while the ball is going down. I'll tell you what, that's a good way to lose minutes with Coach Sutton. Good follow by Arthur Johnson. He didn't close it, and both teams can go in some droughts. Missouri more usually on the quality of shots. Oklahoma just because they can't score a ton. Ricky Balding just came up with openers. His first bucket. Watch this. Clemens by himself. And a nice shot there. Well, back to an even ball game. Seven points Clemens. 17. Trayvon Bryant. McKinney. Good move in the lane. He got it. Yeah, what a good feel and a good find for McKinney. Got a good touch. Knows how to play. Double team down low. They kicked it across McKinney instead of settling for the open three. Ended up defensively. And the Cowboys, when you're careless, is there an explosive team? They will get out and run. They'll take open shots. Good looks. Easy finish by Clemens that time. As you mentioned, Freddie's got seven points. This time, here's Jimmy McKinney. The value of the all freshman league. He's got a good feel, good patience. Timeout Cowboys. The excitement to March basketball right there. Mizzou bench reacting to the time. Well, he suddenly had a, hadn't made a move yet to get Melvin Sanders. I think a guy that can make so much happen. McKinney gets them both. Missouri by two with 8 11 left. Just out of Chicago's Crane High School. McKinney's got a good look. And a bucket. Got a great stroke. McKinney's got a good feel. Again, good relief. Nice dish down low. Deep corner. There's Allen. Uh, Eddie Sutton's ball club now. Defensively came down to McFarland, simply took it away. Arthur Johnson. Arthur Johnson's got to be careful now not to pick up his third personal. Creative. Ricky uh, Clemens has eight points. Much easier. Triangle offense worked real. Where do they get a shot here? Victor Williams is going to have to throw it. Off in time, it doesn't matter because it didn't get near the apparatus, and we've got a heck of a first half. You bet. Well played. Good defensive battle. 28 28 all. Jimmy McKinney with 10. Live from Dallas, where Oklahoma State and Mizzou are all tied up at the half 28 28. It started quickly for Oklahoma State and Melvin Sanders with the steal, which is very typical of Melvin. Then he knocked into three. He had five points. The problem, he picked up his third personal, had to sit out the second part of the first half. And all of a sudden, Jimmy McKinney, he got some open looks. He knocked them in, shot the ball well, had ten points, two of two from beyond the three-point line. Possession to possession. That's all just caused by good defensive play. Tony Allen will be coming out of the ballgame. Took it in the eye and put Mayer under the basket. Get away from fouls so far in this game, but he wasn't about to let the Clemens have the easy drive. Well, maybe surprising because he's, he's guarding Arthur Johnson, but they're doing going to make it like that on the left. Wide open. Pass. That's a terrific find by Trayvon Bryant. And McKinney inside, there's the double team you talked about. Tough shot up, won't go. Tip try, will. And stayed with it. Nowhere to go. He got it on the board. Points for Ivan McFarlane. There's Trayvon Bryant working and getting it off the glass. Bryant's got, a, Bryant's got a lot of moves. Good face up play. Johnson actually, the Cowboys had inside position. He still came up with it. All good moves. 
Looks like a screen down low. Trayvon Bryant just kind of. Well, then going back to Arthur Jackson. A soft touch for the big fella. No, yeah, good pass. Once Paulding took. He was in the zone. Two, three zone out of the underneath, out of bounds. Jackson, good yeah. stroke. Jane Jackson. Paulding works against Sanders. Arthur Johnson against Andre Williams. Help came from Miller, but Kevin Young got a stick back. Well, and the reason that happens is Miller comes to help. He's got a shot. Yeah. Well, he has been impressive. Getting better all season long. Just have to stay out of the officials' faces. Good move again by Bryant. He's got five. There's Paulding. Bryant had a notion, didn't shoot it. That's a long way out. A Paulding win. He nailed it. Yeah, that, that is a uh, tough young man. He has struggled shooting the ball, but not bad. Looking for Arthur Johnson inside, and the defense has to honor that. That gave Paulding some space. Here, you got a great big man inside. Let him go to work. Arthur Johnson. Let him go to work. Let's talk about Paulding, and let's talk about shooter mentality. Huh? Let's take a look at Missouri, how patient the big man Johnson has become with the Cowboys. You have an offensive foul perimeter right now. Kind of yeah, they're, they're allowing the defense just to shift around. Nice shot by Victor. There's ninth point. This evening. We're having fun. What a ball game in Dallas. Arthur Johnson against Andre Williams. Good pass. Beautiful pace to Trayvon Bryant for the finish. That is so nice to watch when a big guy has enough patience to see the floor. Running down there, and the double team comes to help. All alone is Paulding. Nailed it. Another assist, Arthur Johnson. What a find. 55, 50. Better go. Four on the shot clock. He's going to pull up and let it fly in there. Wow. <laughs> McFarland goes up. Hard to tell. Well, watch this. Sanders with four fouls. Probably thinking it doesn't matter now. McKinney got it to the rack. Oh, and finished. Oh. He got nailed and still made it. Big hoop. 15 points for Jimmy McKinney, and he's going to the line to try and tie it. I mean, Andre Williams and McFarlane are coming from the weak side. Watch him up in the air, and boom. He takes a hit to finish. Oh, what a play. My goodness. McKinney with 15. That's a tie. Big three-point play from the freshman. Sitting out here with 147 to play, dead even at 58. Andre Williams puts it on the deck, takes it in, throws it up, doesn't get it, tipped by Miller. And that's McFarlane with a low hammered and blocked down in there by Arthur Johnson. And they scrap for it in the corner, it belongs to the Tigers. What a block by Johnson, uh, hustle by Paulding, and then a smart play by Ricky Paulding to call timeout. McFarland got the rebound. It was a drive by Williams and looked like Tony Allen. They had the tip right there. They couldn't get a hold of it when McFarland turned. Anytime you go away from a shot blocker, they're going to make the block. You got to turn right into the body. Good job by the Detroit buddies. <laughs> Arthur Johnson and Ricky Paulding. He started the day with 50 blocks. Just out of the Williams. Got it again down in one. Oh, tough shot. Oh, oh, oh. That's good defense. That is tough shot. Good defense. Good help by Bryant. Sanders looked like he was open. Well, he got it last. Tiger basketball. A stop by Missouri. And a chance for the last shot of the game. Only difference is point. Comes out there. Yep. Kenny's out there. Johnson's out there. Paulding's out there. Ricky Clemens is out there. Often they'd like to spread the floor and then the shot clock winds down. High screen and roll. Maybe a guy coming off the screen. They're just going to be patient. Again, we'll see if the Cowboys attack. See if they can maybe get a five-second clock. Yeah. Tough matchup for Allen on Clemens. Clemens awfully quick to handle. 14 seconds left. Tied to 58. Nine seconds left. Six, five. McKinney. Not close in there. Bryant got it on the rim. At the buzzer. At the game. That's game. What a finish. They're chasing Trayvon Bryant around and trying to celebrate with him. Well, it's a tournament time. Last night we saw Colorado win it. This time, great defense by the Cowboys. McKinney had nowhere to go. Bryant simply caught it and kind of got it up on the rim, and it fell in. Wow. What a ball game. 
What a way to end. What a battle. Two teams that just fought hard all game long. They are asking for a replay. Well, they have to see a replay. Yeah. Make sure the shot, but it did. It was the nice thing is the baskets have the light yeah. on it. So great defense. McKinney has nowhere to go. Look at Tony Allen making the play. It falls into Bryant's hands and plenty of time. I mean, there's a second and then it just goes in. So plenty of time. Great finish. Great shot. Unbelievable. What a ball game. <laughs> hey, it's tournament time. This is, I, I tell you, this is a great defensive play. Just couldn't get a handle on it. And look at Trayvon Bryant. Just catch, turn, plenty of time left, and it drops through. What a finish. And it will be Missouri, Kansas tomorrow afternoon. What a class. Round three. Yeah, they've had two pretty good games so far, both won by the Jayhawks. Look at the reaction from the Tiger bench and the chase is on. And Trayvon Bryant, well, they're not going to catch him. That's the fastest he's run all year. <laughs> look at that. There's a. There's the amount oh, of the time. Love it. 60 58. That's a lot of ball game right there. And again, Missouri matches up with Kansas tomorrow afternoon. And we've got two more games to go in Dallas tonight. We're having fun. As Missouri takes on Kansas, we have the Big 12 tournament center. Gets the basketball, and Jeff Graves with a nice move underneath. KU is up by five again when Rob Stone is finished. We'll get to you. Just looking to lock down a number one seed, taking on Missouri. Michael Lee from range. No problem. Hits the baseline three. Kansas with an early 10-point lead. The Jayhawks are only shooting 29% in this game, but they have an eight-point lead. 11 minutes. I think that 10 minutes and change left in the first half. Kansas looking to lock down that Big 12 championship. They haven't won the conference tournament since 1999. All righty, thanks so much. Our situation is 10 minutes and five seconds left in the opening half of this first of two semifinal games. Kansas on top, 16 to 10. And quite frankly, for the Missouri Tigers, the man who has kept them going is uh, Trayvon Bryant. He has eight points. He's four of five from the field, while Kansas already has six individuals who have scored. Very, very balanced. Strong for fans to talk about rankings and talent level. <laughs> In case you forget, that was 96, 97, and 98. KU was ranked either first or second. Bryant Nash in there on the low blocks. He's undersized at that position. That's one of the areas that Kansas loses with the injury. Now the foul problem for, for Collison. Now called in this tournament. So they were backed against the wall as they were trying to run down Oklahoma State, who had beaten them early this year. So Missouri with the attitude about. Well, you see him wearing knee sleeves on both knees. He's had problems with those knees all season long. A month ago, he was feeling pretty good, but now with all the games that have been played the, the last couple days, they're flaming up again. He's trying to keep him warm, trying to stay loose. Made a great pass right there. Good interior pass. And Missouri with the finish. I'll tell you what, Jefferson, or Ferguson, I mean, scored the hoop and <laughs> the chest bump. I thought that another second and a half, he'd have been right on time. Yeah. Kenny all the way to the hoop. Got the high screen outside. Hazard pay to go up there. Miles. All the way to the other side. Heinrich, three. Very steady player. Arthur Johnson. Big Arthur's gone a long time without successful. This is the last game of the regular season. Clements, way outside, lights it up for the three. But then watch this shot by Miles. All right. Now talk about form here. <laughs> well, talk about desperation. And so many times this ball game has come down to that last possession. Hasn't always been pretty, but the team that makes the plays late usually walks out of the field house with a win. Split, let me ask you something. How far out was Heinrich on that shot? Was, <laughs> was he here after being uh, out of the lead cut to one and a three-pointer by Paul Damon? That is the first hoop since the second showing on the clock here in the first of two semifinal matchups. In the second game this afternoon, it'll be Texas Tech taking on. He is a guy that can go into halftime with those kind of numbers and still come out with a big dad. He is that explosive, and Missouri's going to need some of that. With the rebound, gets it out to Clements. Guarded closely, gets the shot away, and they had the follow, and it got blocked inside. It was, that, it was Nash, I believe, that was unsighted, who got the block from the play, and as we head to the locker room, it is an eight-point margin, 34-26. Kansas leading this one. Collison nine points, seven rebounds, and to document the foul situation, Collison with the couple. 
Uh, Paul in the end of the world. Ages in the ball game. That's an important ah. shot right there for Missouri. Good shooter, uncontested shot, wide open. Needs to bury it to turn the momentum. Just a bit. He said, "Hey, if I get by my defender here, it's uh, home free," and he did. Well, he is the total package right now for Kansas. A talented kid who works hard, terrific defender. Let me change what I said. I had him for one too many fouls in the first half. It's the three-pointer is knocked down by Paulding. It's only the second foul it's left in this first semifinal game. Clemens oh so quick. Gets the reversal and knocks it down where he can step out and do that. But he's done so much double and triple teams. He's forced people out on the floor with it. Boy. Paulding got it sent back in the space at the other end twice. On the open floor, Kansas very good in the open floor. They turn it into a transition basket. Trayvon Bryant against Collison, a little shake and bake, and he gets that one down. That's a nice move by Bryant. And he oh, high low. Collison is up at the free throw line. Give him two or three strides to the hoop. I don't want to be the guy inside. <laughs> Heinrich now has three fouls. As uh, Arthur Johnson are 18 20 to play. We'll put that time down as Arthur Johnson scores that one and see how much Missouri is able to get back into this ball game with Heinrich. A rebound, but here's Arthur Johnson. And a quick out the pass to Paulding. Yeah, that's a nice job transition, didn't it? High off the glass is Paulding. Uh, Paulding is a guy that can be a difference maker as well. Hein Ryan couldn't get that one. McKinney hustles for the rebound and from a nearly impossible angle puts it up from the underneath the basket. Bryant, deep breath, bends the knees. And he got that one. Nice stroke. Time out on the floor. Eight. Did you see Langford's move? Now, he's a lefty. Took it to that side, but he also took it right at Arthur Johnson. Arthur Johnson back right out of bounds. Stay away from foul number four. Keep pounding it in there. It comes down to personnel. And they see Jan on the floor. He's a, he's a freshman. He knows that he has to get stronger. Kansas doesn't want to play him in this kind of ball. Kansas having to play in a Missouri even during the stretch with Heinrich on the bench. Missouri sees an offer. And he can... Uh, Draw them to within three. It's been a while since it's been that close, and McKinney knocks it down. So the freshman right here, draw a little closer with the key player over the scores table. Bryant does just that. So now make that run 15 to 6 since Heinrich went to the bench. Game against the winner of the Texas Tech and Oklahoma game. And Paulie rattles it home. And the people in foul trouble for Kansas, they came out in a matchup zone that. Clements way outside for three. He has not been a bigger one than Missouri on top by one. He found a way to hang around in this one when at that time it looked like everything favored Kansas. Wow, dangerous play right there. Less on his bench. Now Clemens from the deep three right there. And once he hit that one, you knew that the next time he touched it, if it felt like good look and a nice job by Johnson to cut off the, the lane for Langford, and he got the huge bounce. Wow, that thing with six feet up, came right back for a foul, and he is about to check back in the lineup. To play as long as he can. Nash undersized for a frontline player. I think you could look for Missouri to go right back inside. Afternoon. Texas Tech and Oklahoma, the second one, immediately following this one. Way outside, rattling home, Ricky Paulding. Kansas State the season. Here comes the trap, but McKinney got it over to Clemens. The lob pass inside to Johnson, and he scores over Collison to break the tie. Three minutes and 23 seconds left. And Missouri is early in the ballgame. Kansas gambled. Missouri handled it and got a layup. Miles all the way down at 214. Back over to Bryant. The lob pass into Johnson. Takes it up against Graves, and he scores. And no help defense from Kansas right there. Even Jay's got to work with in there. I mean, that's got to be a great gift for him. He's good enough player now. Doesn't have to together. Rarely do you have a blowout. It comes down to this kind of scenario. Langford puts it on the floor. Little too hard to Michael Lee. Throws it away. Turnover number 12 with 38.1 seconds left. And Quinn Snyder will actually... It comes a possession ball game. You've got to get a good shot. Kansas spacing the floor right there. Ball goes out of bounds. Changes the game dramatically for the Jayhawks. Seven points. Two for two at the line. Now with this one here, he can make it a two trip. He wants to be at the free throw line. Second one on the way, it's a four-point lead. Position game for the Jayhawks. Heinrich, back to Graves. Heinrich, 4 three. Too hard up the back iron. Grant with the rebound, and he's fouled with 13 seconds left. 
had to sit for eight minutes and 29 seconds. And it was a 15 to 6 run by Missouri. They got back into the ball game as Bryant rattles it home. And now times in one year. Texas couldn't beat Tech last night for the third time. Kansas can't beat Missouri for the third time this year. This one is history. And it is the Missouri Tigers with the upset of the top seed in the Big 12 Conference, 68 to 63. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For Paul Smithorf and Andy Katz. Ron Franklin saying so long. Now let's send it out to Gulfstream Park for the Florida Derby. We'll be back in 30 minutes on ESPN2 for our second semifinal game. So long, everybody. Now, the difficult thing is nobody in the history of the Big 12 has ever played on Thursday and won the tournament on Sunday. Well, don't tell Quinn Snyder and his team that they can't do it. Uh, this is a team that's confident. They have played well. They knocked off Oklahoma late in Big 12 play. They're comfortable coming into today's, today's action. Ricky Paulding has been the man in the last few weeks. He's really got his jump shot going and has been aggressive with the ball. He must maintain that today. Ricky Clemens, one of the quicker guards in all of college basketball. They must contain him. He's a good defender also. Every Everything going the offensive end runs through Arthur Johnson. He has been a load inside, and he was against the Sooners in the first matchup. Johnson. Hi, Mike and Dick Banks. We'll have the post-game comments of Mike Krzyzewski at halftime of this game. Sooners have the early lead. We'll get you to Ron Franklin and John Sumbold in Dallas for first half action right after this. 9.58 left in the first half of this one from the American Airlines Center in Dallas. It is 18-8. to eight. The Oklahoma Sooners have come out firing. And John and I were just commenting during the timeout. John said, you know, they've got five guys in double figures for the tournament. As Arthur Johnson knocks down still another one. As we mentioned, Trayvon has had a tremendous tournament. The game winner two games ago. And he was outstanding yesterday as well. There's the three. And Clements pumps the fist as if to say, finally. Inside to Paul to McKinney alone. And here's Clements. And he will pump it out on the wing. Paulding. Better look for Paulding. All created because the offensive rebound. <laughs> number one. I could definitely. <laughs> Way outside his price. And he banked it in. Got to call that one. Sometimes it's your day and your year. It's in the 20. Shot clock is at three. At two. Wallace White with the three-pointer. I'm telling you what, that kid's stroke is, is so on. Oklahoma being very deliberate on this offensive trip again. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Alexander. Sometimes the magic works, sometimes it doesn't. And as you said, John, when it's going right, it's going yeah, right. That's a nice play. They ran a screen, a high screen, and actually got, got back, but Quantus White got in there to keep it alive for another three. Well, Sooner's on the roll. What a performance so far. Price. They don't care if they're a number two. They just want to go play in Oklahoma City for those first two ball games. And you know, that is would make a difficult situation for anybody as the horn sounds and we head to the locker room with a 37 to 18 margin with Oklahoma clearly on top. Now let's send it to Chris Fowler and Dick's 12 assists. Impressive number. This price is limping. Yeah, I told you they taped up that uh, leg just below his knee. And as ESPN brings you Bracketology 101, NCAA Men's Selection Special presented by Staples. David Harrison, the sophomore from Colorado. The seven-footer is continually getting better as a player, but he and Bookhouse just challenge each other. AJ's still playing well. Nice that time, missed that jumper. John, let me ask you something about him as Price puts up the three. Stop and fire. I was going to say, you better pick him up because he'll just simply stop and fire. That's almost three in a row. Trip to the Final Four a year ago. They'd love to get back to New Orleans this season with Price and Qantas. Johnson. Oh, nice soft touch, huh? It was. 14 points for him now. Forgot to mention our championship. Women's Selection Sunday exclusively on ESPN. This is it to Arthur Johnson in the flush. Good pass. Arthur Johnson. I think the Sooners need a couple. McKinney, jump stop. Yep. Slowly but surely. Simon their way back in. 8-0 run and the crowd on the defensive end. McKinney waiting for a three. Well, it's on the way. He got it. Well, they have clawed their way back now down 11. This is when they need him. They need to try to take a look at shooting the next couple times down. Tough shot by Clemens. Good finish. 
just about to shoot their first free throw. Well, the luck of the bounce has kind of changed. Push it up for the Tigers. Tell you what, there's a quicker step now to this Tiger team. Johnson on a roll. Don't go anywhere and call a neighbor. Eight-point ball game. Largest lead, 22 by Oklahoma. You may be tired, but now the innards are sitting down in the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas right now. Tigers can cut it to five or six. The bouncer to Arthur Johnson. Turnaround hits the turnaround jumper. Johnson now with 21 points, and it is a six-point ball game. Dominated, been able to score at will. He was the one player that kept Missouri even close in this ball game, remotely close in the first half. Not only that, but he Oklahoma who came back, and that's when they won their first tournament championship. Texas couldn't buy a basket, very similar to what we're seeing from home. So good, and then missing the open looks. Missouri expect uh, Arthur Jenner called it. Here's the screen, trying to get Clemens free. McKinney back to Bryant. He'll take the three and he'll get it. What a stroke. One point ball game. 48 47 with 119 to play. What a comeback. What heart. They fought it. I wouldn't have believed it against this Sooner team. Don't forget the women's selection special coming up exclusively on ESPN immediately following our Big 12 championship. What a finish. What a good way to wind down the Big 12 Conference. Hollis Price gets away the long three-point attempt, and he came close to banging that thing in. Arthur Johnson comes away with a rebound. There is about, what, a second and a half difference between game clock and shot clock. And Johnson, when he saw the quick double team, he's going to have open shooting. Clemens for three. Nope, not there. Paulding hustles for the rebound, and it's gotten by Oklahoma. 15 seconds left. Price is fouled in the backcourt, 12.6 seconds remaining. Still Ron, a one possession game. Oklahoma cannot sit. Front end of the one and one. Puts it up and misses it. Arthur Johnson with the rebound. Arrives Gets it to the McKinney. They got numbers. Paulding down the left sideline. Pulls up for the jumper. Off the glass. Won't go. Ball on the floor. Point eight seconds showing. And it's going to be timeout Oklahoma. I'll tell you what, Quantus White, Quantus White, Ron, simply gets his body in there and comes up with the ball. Well, Hollis is hurt again. Missouri pushes, they have numbers. Now you got Paul, they're going to attack. Jabari Brown does a nice job of at least challenging that shot. Watch Quantus White, the smallest guy out there, just fighting, banging, trying to get there. He's inbounds. Quinn wanted a jump ball, but but none of his players went and got the ball. Trayvon Bryant did not get the ball. If he had a jump ball, there. 47 Oklahoma. Hollis Price looked like he pulled the left the groin muscle. That is painful. It's third straight. Phillip 66 Big 12 basketball tournament champion. If he actually misses this free throw, they won't have time to get it off. There's the miss. And there is the final, 49 to 47. And the celebration begins. And what's really nice here is the embracing between Missouri and Oklahoma, the respect that they have for each other. Chris and Digger back in the studio. Let's go back to you. Um, Arthur Johnson's a man. Ricky Paulden's a man. I mean, they came back, but they've got two great players. and. Illinois and their, their best player is the guy at the bottom, Kent Williams. He averages 15 points per game on the other side. Bryant, Johnson, Clemens, McKinney, and Alding, the young man out of Detroit. Southern Illinois, tell us in his fifth season as the head coach in Carbondale, a longtime assistant to Gene Cady at Purdue. Spent 18 seasons kind of bringing it all together. Big Arthur Johnson, 6'9 inside. He is the difference maker. Missouri wants to establish him early as well. Here's Bryant pulling up from 16 feet and hits it. Well, maybe we should. Inside Johnson. Double team forced it up and somehow gets the bounce. Well, he's such a strong prep. He's kind of the connector and makes a lot of things happen. Here's Brian across the lane. And that left-handed jump shot is working for him. Ball on the floor. Picked up. Warren has it blocked. Out.
outlet pass to Clemens. Three on one. Clemens to Johnson, who lays it up and in, and the foul. Arthur can do nothing but laugh here on the break. Turner's all by himself, three on one, and watch him turn, try to take that charge, and then change his mind. <laughs> yeah, he did. I mean, you know what? That's like seeing a bus. Here's Johnson, double team, finds Young, gathers himself and lays it in. Well, he's got nice hands. That's a nice job by Arthur Johnson. Two, you can see it a little bit, particularly in the big men, the front line of Southern Illinois, but they've relaxed now, settled down. But I'll tell you what, they got to be nervous about the fact that Arthur's here in the half court. It's not any concerted pressure like a zone press or a set-up press. They're just trying to stick to their men, help out in the paint. Meanwhile, Ricky Clements buries a three. Wraps it around to Young. No good. Tipped up by Johnson. Gets it again. The fadeaway on the baseline by Art Johnson. And again, getting him established early really pays off. 14 to shoot. Skip pass. And that one is good again for Harrison. I tell you what, you look at these Southern Illinois good range. Southern Illinois, four of six from the three-point line. Trayvon Bryant forcing it up across the lane. And that's the power game. With yet another rebound. Now Clements. You see the body bounce off of Arthur Johnson. He goes up there and smothers that ball. Josh Gronke, though, feels okay in the dome. He knocks down the three. Arthur Johnson down low. Great ball fake. Can't get it to fall, but Trayvon Bryant is there for the tap in. And that's he has eight. Arthur Johnson, across the lane, but that is money in the bank. Trayvon, Bryan, and Arthur. Here's Johnson, double team, wraps it inside, Young just jams it down with one hand. And again, Arthur Young, well, first of all, like I said, comfort, he locates first and then finds the open man. Too many guys rush it, but here, look at him relax and just look and wait. Ricky Paulding off the dribble this time, leans in, and he finally gets one to go. Paulding shooting in rhythm, and he will go to the line to complete the conventional three-point play. And not only is shooting in rhythm, but he's facing the hoop right here. Instead of shooting from the corner where you have to have maximum depth perception, that backboard gives you the ability to measure the depth. But if you're on the side in the corner, it's very difficult to do that. Those are the ones that he missed completely. Adds the free throw, Paulding another one of those fouled and bailed him out of that tough situation. So Paulding at the line, and after what he did last year in the Sweet 16, you can call him whatever he is. Right. 20 points, him. 9 rebounds, took his team to 2 wins. Paulding off the dribble, down the lane, the kick, McKinney for 3. Short, and that'll do it. A sloppy first half by both teams. Missouri turned it over. Southern Illinois couldn't hit free throws. 12 lead changes, and Mizzou heads into the locker room with a one-point lead, 33-32. Now let's go to Solomon Wilcox with Coach Snyder. When before the game, you told your players to beware of ball pressure, but 13 turnovers in the first half. What corrections do you make at halftime? Well, we got to be tougher with the ball. We've had a lot of foul trouble, really, with our best ball handling lineups. And uh, I'm more concerned with our, our legs. We look a little, we're not quite as urgent to help each other out on the offensive end. And we just uh, got to be tougher. All right, Coach. Thanks okay. for stopping by. Gus Lynn. All right, CBS. Here's Brian inside. The drop step. Got it up and in. The two big guys that made the difference. Well, they certainly ball the Clemens and Paul. Arthur Johnson, the pivot. Got it up and in. He has such a nice touch close to the basket. Brooks the other way, though. He beats Missouri down the floor. That was just a few. Johnson squaring up now. And he just fires a dart into the bucket. I don't even know if that was a shot. It looked like a pass because somebody had an opportunity for an alley-oop. 14.7 rebounds for Johnson. Meanwhile, Ken Williams is starting to warm up a bit. Protect your big guy because he's the one that's carrying you. And Arthur Johnson showing us that mobility that I spoke of. A guy that size with the quick feet and soft touch. In the corner and finally Jimmy McKinney knocking one down. Williams going down hard. Here's Paulding finally with an open look. And a 
a good stroke. 45-43 Missouri to Paulding. Pulls up and hits. Now that's Ricky Paulding's game right there. In transition 11. And Missouri has had problems. They've turned the ball over 15 times. But they're big men. Guys like Trayvon Bryant who just way out. Warren with the offensive rebound. Leads in. Blocked by Art Johnson. You've got to subordinate that ego and do the thing that's best for the team. And right now, instead of looking for shots, McKinney, Paulding, and Clemens ought to be maneuvered. Now Paulding hard to the basket. Oh, somehow he banked it in with English. Missouri leads Southern Illinois by four with 12.26 remaining. And a moment ago, I said that the guards should be focused on getting it to the big men, but I guess Ricky Paulding showed me, huh? Yes, he did. Here's another look right here, though, but it is a difficult shot as he's surrounded by four maroon shirts. You know, those aren't the kinds of things you want to bank your offense on. Again, Ricky Paulding, a tremendously gifted guy, you know, equalizer for Missouri. 17 turnovers by Missouri that's led to a number of Southern Illinois. Second free throw good. Aston. No look pass stolen by Clements. Ahead of the field. He's got the big man with him. Oh, and he just dropped it. Ha <laughs> ha. And that'll break out a smile from Arthur Johnson, but some unselfish play by Ricky Clemens. Oh, they believe they should be in this game and should win this game. Nice kiss off the glass by Ricky Paulding. Oh, getting double teamed, not nearly as nifty with the pass as Arthur Johnson. Across the lane, jump hook, short. Got his own rebound and sticks it in. Big Art came to play today. And along with Trayvon Bryant, the rest of his guys may have stayed in Columbia as that jump shot goes down by Brooks. And it's almost coming up with the steal. Extra pass, Deerman got his man in the air and draws the foul. Big game, Jermaine. Big game, has some fire in his belly. Weak side, Paulding to McKinney. He fires, got it. 64-61. The big Arthur Bryant and the pass back outside off the penetration. Wide open. Jimmy McKinney. It all began with Arthur. Here's McKinney. Paulding on the jump stop. Leads in and buries one. Great elevation by Ricky Paulding. Mazou is within one. 16. And this game has been a sloppy one for the Missouri Tigers, they've turned it over a bunch of times. Ties the score at 64. Missouri now takes the lead. 334 and counting. Also, four of seven from the free throw line. Pittsburgh Wagner tomorrow in Boston. Second free throw for Johnson is good. 67, 64, link down. Third consecutive stop by Missouri, although that was a wide open shot, just missed. But Paulding stop and start. The elevation and hits. Ricky Paulding. Long defensively, Ken Snyder's wondering, what took you guys so long? We're going on an 11-0 run thus far. And that snaps the run as Stetson Hairston knocks down a three. Long defense. Inside Johnson. Turn around jump shot. Off the front rim and in. Arthur Johnson with the feathery touch. 24 points for the big man. Jude. Williams in the corner. Warren, the jump hook, got it. He reached into his bag of tricks for that one. Well, it's absolutely a reluctant to make it a two-possession ball game. And Johnson misses the second. Now, Southern Illinois has a chance to take the lead. How important are these three down the stretch on both ends of the floor? The fans rise to their feet in the lower bowl. Williams straight away! And off the back rim. And Bryant with the rebound, but he traveled. Holy mackerel, what a call. Shot clock turned off. Time out, Mizzou. You couldn't get a more wide open shot for a guy like Kent Williams. He had it all the way, just couldn't put it down. Inside, Deerman loses it, gets it back, lays it up and in. And we are tied at 71.
Pretty good decision by Bruce Weber to go for the quick one. Here we go. Clemens. Shot clock turned off. Southern Illinois had a chance to hold it for the last shot. But the best available shot might not have made itself available had they held it. Here's Paulding off the dribble to the basket. And a blocking foul call against Southern Illinois. And Bruce Weber can't believe it. There's the drive. There was certainly contact there. It was difficult. Certainly it was difficult for us to see. Look at the clock running down. There's a step in by Dearman right there. Whoa. <laughs> That's a shaky one there. Obviously, we have the benefit of the replay. I think Dearman hurt his case by adding a little bit of acting to it. Had he just stood there, and that was perfect today. And in these moments, that ball could get a little heavy and sticky. Well, and that's all you can do if you're Quinn Snyder. Just add your encouragement. One more coming for Ricky. And he gets it. 4.1 remaining. Southern Illinois has to go the length of the floor. And a timeout call. With 1.5 to go to get the final shot. Here's Williams. Fire! Off the front row, no. Missouri dodges a bullet. The final score, 72-71 Missouri. Well, yesterday in practice, Southern Illinois anticipated this type of opportunity, ran the play to perfection, and again, Williams off the screen, got a good look, squared up, just couldn't get enough leg underneath it to get it there. Good patience by the inbound passer. You can't ask for a better look, a better shot. Just tough luck for Kent Williams. So Missouri advances to the next round. They will take on the Golden Eagles from Marquette. And they'll have to play better to beat that Marquette team. The Chevrolet players of the game. Jermaine, big game, Dearman, 17 points, 8 of 17. Arthur Johnson, a double-double, 24 and 11. He also had a couple of block shots. 72-71, the final. All right, Gus, thank you. So the Missouri Tigers advance to play Marquette on Saturday. Again, Shane. Fourteen twenty-nine to go in the first half. Marquette leads 13-8. The Golden Eagles of Marquette are on a 9-0 run. And Gus Johnson along with Len Elmore. What have you seen thus far? Well, what we've seen is Marquette able to compete on the boards. They lead by a plus three. And we've seen Missouri negating their own inside height advantage by taking quick shots on the perimeter and really forgetting about those guys. Right now, Johnson gets the ball inside. But look how far out he's been put. Ricky Clemens 0 for 4. Nice pass inside to Young. Lowers his shoulder and lays it in. That's what See you again soon. Fourteen twenty nine to go in the first half. Marquette leads 13-8. The Golden Eagles of Marquette are on a 9-0 run. And Gus Johnson along with Len Elmore. What have you seen thus far? Well, what we've seen is Marquette able to compete on the boards. They lead by a plus three. And we've seen Missouri negating their own inside height advantage by taking quick shots on the perimeter and really forgetting about those guys. Right now, Johnson gets the ball inside. But look how far out he's been put. Ricky Clemens 0 for 4. Nice pass inside to Young. Lowers his shoulder and lays it in. But that's what Missouri has to do. They've got to focus on a way to establish. Here's Cronky, guarded by Novak. They reverse it. Balding on the baseline. Elevates. Double pumps it in. And that's a much better job of attacking that match. Marquette with six points off turnovers. And the Golden Eagles lead 18-12. Clemens... 
In the quarter, Kroenke, catch and shoot and hit. The lane cross, Kroenke. Kroenke hit in the corner for a period of time and then come back in. And he doesn't, you don't lose anything with him in the game. Here's Oxford Johnson. Great drop step on the baseline. Again, good patience by Missouri. Inside, Jackson rolls, rejected. Clemens on the break. Marquette gets back. Clemens baseline wraps it around. Now Johnson. Triple team. Ricky Clemens for three. Down and. And that's the inside out combination Missouri has to exploit. If Johnson can set it for Young, Paulding, and Arthur Johnson in the front court. A steal by Wade. Watch out. Bang. Dwayne Wade. That time bailed him out. You know, Arthur Johnson has had a little bit of success, but it's always when he's been in deep. There he gets some help from Trayvon Bryant. And then, nice drop step that gets him into the paint. What Merritt's been able to do is push him out further so the drop step won't get Johnson into the paint. He's got to turn and face and try to put it on the floor. First round, his numbers 24 and 11. Perfect from the free throw line there. And if he does have it, off their feet. Johnson on the baseline, puts it up and in. Now there he is again, drop stepping into the paint. That's Ricky Paulding and Ricky Clemens in particular. Ricky Clemens having a horrible shooting night. A lot of it is because he's forcing it, not allowing the game to come to him. It's as though when... Yes, America's most watched network. Paulding gets the second. That's three. Javon Bryant comes back in and Kevin Young. Third free throw is good. Paulding. Marquette has played some great defense in the first half, and they shot it well. Also, 57. Go for him to raise up on that jump shot. And if Clemens and McKinney don't hit some perimeter shots, as Wade does there, it's going to be hard to get the ball to Arthur Johnson. Now Paulding in the corner. Clemens. Finally gets one to call. And they did it off of teamwork. Penetrate and kick. And slightly. Balding for three. Got it. Ricky Balding. With 14 points. Missouri close. Versus Holy Cross. Took three shots. Over three. Second one good. And that is the end of the half as Marquette drops into the locker room with a 10-point lead. They shoot 63% from the field in the first half. Well, Dwayne Wade came to play in the first half of this game, unlike for himself off the bounce. Clemens and McKinney, though, need some help. And a steal. Trayvon Bryant stepping in the passing lane. Now McKinney. Clemens takes the shot. Clemens takes the shot. Clothing with the rebound and jam. Holy mackerel. Ricky Paulding caught it and flushed it. And that has flustered the Golden Eagles. They throw it away. They're still remembering the highlight of this one. Again, reverberation. Ricky Paulding, no block out. Clear with the slam, the tip dunk. Now Clemens with the step, the floater. Lost it, gets it back, missed the second one. Bryant inside, no. Johnson finally tips it up and in. And that's the strength of Missouri. Big burly bodies inside. Bell rebounds, four assists. 47-35. Paulding in the corner. Got it. Ricky Paulding trying to keep Missouri in this game. Paulding with 19 points. He has four threes. Take Arthur Johnson out where he's not accustomed to guarding. Put it down. Paulding again. And he drains it from downtown. Five threes for Ricky Paulding. 
has been the catalyst for Missouri in the second half. Well, Ricky Paulding is the one guy who's got the athleticism to compete on the boards and create on the perimeter. He's the guy, as I mentioned before, that's got the capability. You can see that things are shifting a bit. Missouri is really attacking this Marquette defense. Well, they're starting to use their athleticism. They're starting to gain confidence, particularly in the fact that Missouri is hitting that offensive glass. And it's always easier for a shooter when you know when you shoot, your guys are going to get you a second and third offer capitalized on the other end. Ricky Paulding straight away. Got it. Ricky Paulding single-handedly has kept this Missouri team in the game. He has 25 points. Get it to the man that has been leading him thus far. Paulding again. He's got that feeling. Ricky Paulding out of Detroit, Michigan. 55-50. Marquette. That's right, Gus. Get your boys. Detroit, stand up. Clap your hands. Right up. Clemens almost throwing it away. Inside, Johnson. Nice touch. 55-52. Marquette. Tighten it up a little bit. And they want to talk about it. Here come the Tigers. 11.37 to go in the second half. We have a three-point. Paulding single-handedly has reeled in the Golden Eagles. Well, Ricky Paulding has been the light beyond the arc from three, while the rest of Missouri is shooting two of 13, including 0 for 7 by Ricky Clemens. Ricky Paulding is 7 for 10 from three, getting it going. He's put it on the floor, gotten to the basket, and what that's done now is stretch Marquette's defense and allow them to drop a couple down to Arthur Johnson inside. So now they've got that inside-out combination going, and they're making Marquette have to go crazy and trying to find the key. But he's got to be able to contribute in other ways. Get out of the way, get the ball to the guys who can get something done. Like Travis Diener for Marquette. His fellas understand he can get it done. Just when news breaks out, we'll break in. I'm Dan Rather. Officials time out. Marquette by six. With 9.29 to go, and Ricky Paulding has hurt his wrist. He was holding his wrist after uh, receiving a blow to the wrist on their last possession down court. And boy, it couldn't have come at a worse time for Missouri just when Ricky Paulding was heating up. Back into the game, Wade inside, wraps it around for Jackson, Diener. Jackson, no call, Diener straight away. Off the glass and in. How about that? It doesn't matter. He'll find a way to put it in. Four fouls now. So somebody else has to step up. Here's Arthur Johnson, the baby hook inside. 60. Cronkie maintaining the aggressive posture Missouri's taken and going to the basket. Second free throw good. Missouri trying to make a comeback with their top player injured on the bench as Diener is tripped up in the backcourt by Clement. Pull up jump shot. Got it again. Travis Diener. I'll tell you what happened on the screen. It slowed down Ricky Clemens who was trying to. Cronky. He hits. Josh Cronky having the best game of his postseason life, 11 points. Ricky Paulding around the screen, Clemens in the corner, and he gets one to go. But that should go a long way in developing Ricky Clemens' confidence. He's had a tough day, one for eight from three. Cronky sets up, and hits. Cronky having an outstanding game, 13 points. Make that 14. 71. That the pick was there. The last time that happened, Brian didn't. Diener had an open shot. This time, excellent defense because of the communication. Now Diener jump stop off the break and hits a three. This kid is shooting the lights out here in Indianapolis. He now has 22. Arthur Johnson at the line. How's that for picking your spot? Goodness, Scott Merritt, Arthur Johnson, the jump hook on the baseline, gets his own rebound, down it, and the foul. Big fella would not be denied. 19 points, 14 rebounds. And that's 
the importance of going to the basket. Nice jump hook, didn't fade away, and his momentum carried him to the basket to get that offensive foul. 76-70. Johnson adds the free throw. Arthur Johnson, four of six from the free throw. You can follow each game of the... Paulding with 30. Five-point lead for Marquette. Ricky Paulding to Crocky, who's hot. Arthur Johnson, a rebound and stick back. And we have a three-point game in the Midwest. And that's why Missouri is coming back, because they battled from that 10-point depth. The Novak. Diener pulls up. Blue ball, Novak with the rebound. And a new shot clock for the Golden Eagles. They're trying to find the best shot. Here's Wade. An air ball. Good defensive stand by Missouri. But actually, Wade was there. It was a good shot. He just short-armed it. And Mizzou wants a timeout. 2.08 to play. 78. 75. They battled back because of their star, Ricky Paulding, and their big man inside, Arthur Johnson. His 15th rebound. Too strong off the window. They've been able to hit the offensive glass, get some looks. 2.08 to play. A three-point lead for the Golden Eagles of Marquette. Let's join Gus Johnson and Len Elmore. Spectacular. And he hasn't gotten any help from his running partner, Trayvon Bryant. Fouled out with no points. He has 14 points. And he misses the front end. Holy Toledo. And you talk about the value. The off the dribble. Arthur Johnson, seven to shoot. Look how far he is away from the basket, though. Here's McKinney, extra pass, holding for the top. Absolute terrific execution. 78 apiece. Holding with 33. Come out, Marquette. <laughs> the NCAA tournament on CBS. We'll take a look here at that execution in the half court. Holding's just going to drift to the corner and watch the movement around the horn to find him. Diagonal pass. There's Paulding going to the corner, and the screen by Kroenke, that created the situation where he gets an open look. There's the movement, and right there, look at Kroenke set that screen on Big Robert Jackson, kept Jackson from going out and bothering Paulding on that jumper. We told you, Kroenke, a lot of the little things, that's how you win. Here's Dwayne Wade looking for a shot inside, fires, and he gets it to go. Marquette reclaims the lead. Shot clock turned off. Timeout, Missouri. Here comes McKinney. They'll look for Baldwin. Now they're looking for Big Arthur. Now he creates. And a whistle. A foul on the floor inside. And it's against Marquette. And if Arthur Johnson. 22 points, 17 rebounds for Art. He's been working all year on his free throw shooting. And the first one is good. And take a look under the back at the rebounds. You may have to foul them right away. Here's a second for Johnson. Got it. And we're tied at 80. 19.7 to go. Just get ahead of steam going. And now they drop back to half court as they should. Interestingly enough, Jimmy McKinney. McKinney at 6-3 on Diener right now to try to prevent him from getting off that three. Here's Diener down the lane, away the lead in off the heel. Paulding with the rebound, takes a look at the clock. Paulding rises, fires! Johnson with the rebound and we're headed for overtime. We are headed for overtime in Indy. Terrific defense. By Missouri, but I said that Travis Diener would get into that paint with a head of steam. On the circle, there's Wade with a good look. And then on the push, Balding had it lined up. He just short-armed it. And that's why we're in OT, baby. We're 
died at the end. It was teamwork, movement of the ball, finding open shooters. Wade and Johnson in the circle, and the tap is controlled by Marquette. Wade in the corner, Novak rides and fire and rips. And Novak had no problem. Edmonds. Cross court, McKinney pulls up. He gets one to go. Boy, both teams really playing it as well as they can, particularly from the patient standpoint. Back after this. We'll have more as time goes along. Dan Rather in New York. Welcome back. Marquette with an 88-85 lead over Missouri. This game was tied at 80 in overtime. Missouri down by 10 twice, but managed to rally. In the second half, Arthur Johnson has been a man tonight as he gets the first one to go. Johnson, 7 of 9 at the line, including... And what Missouri has done is they've decided that they want to go to their strength, find Arthur Johnson either by straight entry pass or by penetration, but he's got to get touches because he's a difference maker, and he makes Marquette have to adjust to him. 20 Wade across the lane, down at... Dwayne Wade with 20. And Wade to the basket. Reverse layup. No. Tapped up and in by the freshman Kevin Young. He's been quiet offensively. Novak turns and drills another one. Three threes. And did you see the look on Kevin Young's face at seven feet? Even he could. Overtime. Balding. Top of the key. Clemens. Loose ball. Rebounded by Wade. Clemens continues to take his shots despite being two of 14, one of nine from the three-point line. But when you inside Merritt off the glass and in. And that's what I mean by Travis Dina. He's gonna find people. He's gonna find a way through your defense. Paulding for three. Short. Diener with the rebound. Marquette. Their level of play rising in overtime. Six for six from the field. That time Missouri went to the three too soon. You know, there was still enough time, a little less than a minute. Holding for three. Got it. But uh, not enough for this Missouri squad. As they back off. Merritt pulls it out. Novak, the hero in overtime. Five seconds to go. The Golden Eagles will head for Minneapolis. They defeat Missouri 101-92 in advance to the match. You know, we really played hard tonight, and, uh, you know, we, we got a great group of guys coming back. And it, it, you know, we definitely want to see ourselves in the position again next year, but, you know, right now we just, you know, we're still kind of sad and, and kind of disappointed about the loss. And, so that's, that's kind of soaking in with us right now. Okay, to the right. Uh, those guys had um, shots. They just missed their shots. Um, it's not frustrating because um, those shots those guys had hit this year. and um, Just tonight they were off. Oh. One win, one loss. They're done this time around. Overtime loss to Marquette. Here's Coach. You know, 90% from the line. You play a team that, that shoots 66 from the three and, you know, gets 20 points from the foul, and it's just tough. And I'm proud of our guys and, and, and how we competed. There's Mark right here. Quinn, Mark. Okay, Bernie right here. Quinn, uh, kind of a two-parter. What, what, uh, what did you tell your guys after the game? And, and Joe and I were walking up the hallway with you and, and noticed that you, you, know, you had your arms around Ricky and uh, Arthur and were talking to them, if you don't mind no. discussing what maybe you were talking about. The, uh, well, these are times as a coach where you, you know, you're looking for something that you can give them that can ease the pain of the of the loss and you know after the game I just I just thought they demonstrated how much character they have a, have as a team and that's some character that, that that they've built over the course of the year and sometimes through mistakes and adversity and and not playing well and and uh, these guys have really learned from all that and I think uh, the team you saw tonight I, I do think we maybe played one of our best halves of the year in that second half and and uh, 
was just reiterating that with AJ and, and Ricky, just telling them how much I love coaching them. Just uh, seeing those two guys grow the way they have as, uh, as players and young men. Uh, you know, you, you wish you could give them something that's profound that they can take, take, take to heart. But I, the main thing I told them is that th these are games that you play with your heart. You know, as much as you, you uh, more than any other, that you, you, you play these games with your heart. And I thought our guys did that. And you're not supposed to lose when you do that. You know, and, and you're, but that's, uh, that's tough. You just, again, hats off to Marquette.